What's up there everyone, welcome to the first episode of Dynamic Conversations. The podcast where I chat with some very interesting and smart close friends of mine about a variety of topics. That could be recent books or documentaries that we really loved, interesting people that we recently discovered, products or services that we currently really enjoy, uh, problems that we're currently trying to solve. And in this first episode, you get to enjoy a chat with two very close friends of mine, Marvin and Philip. And to give a little introduction about the two of them, Marvin is a videographer and photographer uh, who is currently building out his production company, a very skilled videographer. And then there's Philip, who works in sales in an IT company uh, called Easy, a company that has uh, won three times in a row an awards as best managed company in Belgium. Uh, and Philip is just amazing, amazing in sales, uh, knows what he's doing. Those are the two people, and then there's me, and to give a little introduction about me, so I'm a licensed trauma therapist, and I'm the founder of the IPS Project, which is an educational platform on life. These are two great friends of mine that I've had so many adventures, so many deep and good conversations with, and just endless amounts of amazing experiences with, and I hope you enjoy this dynamic conversation with the three of us about, like I said, a variety of different topics. Now, in the description, you can find the show notes of this episode where everything that we talked about, uh, you know, all the books, documentaries, the people, everything that was mentioned in this talk uh, can all be found in the show notes. But with that, please enjoy this episode here with two great, great, great friends of mine who are, I personally to me, highly interesting and highly smart people. So enjoy this first dynamic conversation. By the way, what is everyone drinking? I was That's asking a question. I wanted to ask too. All right, you can go first, guys. Well, I'm drinking a super uh, weird drink. It's it's apple <laughs> Heineken. So oh, whoa. Heineken, dude. Heineken is already bad. <laughs> you're talking to two Belgians right now. And you're showing Heineken to us. Well, the, the we're we're gonna Heineken end real beer. <laughs> this is the end of the call. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the, right. the German in me should drink real beer, but uh, we got this beer for free yesterday from my Indian pizza place. <laughs> it's like an Indian pizza place, which is really good, and they know me, and they really like me, so they give me free beer all the time. So yesterday, <laughs> they gave us like two free six packs. Nice. Loyal what customer. about you guys? Um, I am drinking, actually, a couple of things. Uh, I'm, think I'm drinking a tea here at the left side, and then I'm drinking a glass of wine. Uh, a glass, dude. A that's half a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a glass of apple juice. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. of, of uh, some uh, grape juice. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm mixing it uh, a little bit. And then I got a bottle of water over there to not get hydrated or dehydrated, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but it's not a special wine. It's uh, just some white wine that we still had here. Uh, at my parents' place, so. But it's the first wine in a while, to be honest, that I've been drinking, so it's nice. You're gonna end up good. I uh, actually had a big dilemma on what I was gonna drink because I am now currently in a nutrition program where I track my macros. Oh, uh, right. Which is the first, like, actually, this is the first diet I've done in probably five, five, six, seven years. Um, and it was basically caused by Corona. I was like, I cannot do anything. Uh, so let's, let's try something new. I wanted to do it for a while. I read about it and I was like, fuck it, let's do it now. And today I was like, ah, oh, should I waste some, uh, some basically calories or, um, yeah, bad influences mm -hmm. today. And I chose, oh shit, you cannot do it. <laughs> Wait. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so this is um, some Chinese wine, uh, sorry, Chinese tea that I got gifted by some of my dad's uh, business partners. 
nice. it's amazing. It is oolong tea, mm. and yeah. I've been a very, very big fan of uh, these kinds of teas since like the last 10 years, I guess. Like I was once in China and I got sold on tea and then it's also super good for your health. So I am drinking some nice tea. Mm. So between all of us, you're the one who is uh, staying healthy here in this call. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. <laughs> I had the same dilemma, but I gave up. I have about three beers, one even like Coke light. I've been, I've been addicted to this because it comes out of a glass bottle. A, a friend of mine uh, hooked me up with that. I don't drink <laughs> Coke normally, but like it, it's so weird. This glass bottle changes everything. Yeah. I agree. It's much better. Yeah. I don't know. So I have like a bunch of drinks here. Uh, I'm ready for a long, long talk. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. So wait, have you guys uh, been able out of the list to get some uh, topics out? Yeah. 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 yeah me too. Me too. I, uh, I went on a walk today um, and I was thinking, okay, what is, what could be some interesting things to talk about? And I noted them down on my phone. So nice. Yeah. Well, if anyone feels, uh, you know, feels uh, like uh, to share one already, uh, else I can uh, start as well. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. What do you want to share with us, man? So there's a couple of things. Um, and uh, let's see. One is actually, so recently when I was in Bali, uh, my laptop broke down as, you know, some might know. <laughs> Um, Your laptop and, broke down? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was something wrong with it and I couldn't turn it on. You know, dude. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it was basically where the first time in years that I didn't have a laptop actually to access. And it was super weird. It's sort of like the thing when you don't have your phone with you for a whole day. All of a sudden, there's some kind of freedom in a way coming to you and not like you know i i like not like i can't take distance from my laptop or anything but i basically came to the idea of of implementing a day every week to have a non-technology day and i mean maybe non-technology i can use my phone you know it's not like super strict right but just in general <laughs> <laughs> I love your day where I cannot access technology. You know, like not really, you know, like I still use my phone and my no, no. laptop, but you, you get the idea, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like super strict in case if I need a phone or something, right? But just mainly to do more different things than being on my laptop. <laughs> I'm thinking of a guy like, yeah, I stopped drinking alcohol, you know, like except for beer and wine, you know what I'm saying? But I stopped drinking. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Th sorry. This has been, uh, I don't know. So something new that I want to experiment a little bit with uh, to just have every week, just one day uh, where I'm, mainly not being uh, anything with technology, just doing different things like guitar, piano, drawing, just going outside, just uh, doing different things to than, than just being on my computer and or on my phone. And uh, yeah, that's actually something uh, that, and I think Tim Ferriss actually uh, has something like that too. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm sure he does that. Yeah, where he has like one day a week where he doesn't use a phone or something. And because uh, since this laptop, I, I didn't have it. And I don't know, it's, uh, it just allows different ideas and uh, things to come through because uh, I spent so much time actually on my laptop and uh, not having it for a couple, for just actually two days uh, in Bali kind of made me realize how much I just spent time on it actually. Right. Yeah. And then not having it for like two days just uh, brought like a whole different kind of freedom and things and it's so weird to say that actually uh yeah. but it's the same thing that a lot of have, have with their phone i think as well but did you miss it like whenever i think i lost my phone or when i can't find it there's like this panic coming up where i think like oh jesus i have to like how am i going to do that all those contacts like the clients and all the messages i need to respond to and all, all this stupid shit that you know isn't really that important but like, yep. I think in a way, it's like an extension of ourselves. I mean, yeah, yeah. 
what I find so amazing about it is that you have so much knowledge in your pocket or in such a small device. Like, and and uh, you and me, you and me, we we make money off this thing, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, but then on the other hand side, it, it's it it's so nice to just not be dependent on it all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, and uh, in, in, in it's sort of like a thing when, when you don't have it for a day that you kind of have to detox from it, and it really feels like that. Mm -hmm. And I think realizing that uh, was actually a, a, an interesting realization that I do really feel attached to it, uh, and it feels really weird when I don't use it yeah. for just one day. And uh, that was a weird thing, actually, to realize, and that's why I sort of want to have this in place uh, and it really opens up just different doors to different thoughts because uh, you get certain thoughts when you use a computer mm -hmm. and you get different thoughts when you use a piano or a guitar or, or just go out in nature, right? And so I just uh, wanted to have more possibilities to get more open to those things. Right. Um, and uh, I think in general, uh, yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's actually a thing that they don't realize that they're so, so used to have a phone or a computer all the time with them that it could be a good and interesting thing to experiment with as well so that's been something recently uh that i'm tr that i started implementing actually right did you what was the first thing you did when you took back your laptop or your phone what was the first thing that you checked or uh i can't remember but i guess it was like emails or or like uh messages or something but uh yeah i don't know uh but it felt good to have it not for a day. And what is, because I, I find it very interesting. I have some thoughts of my own All right. about it. But um, I first want to know, like, what do you feel when you didn't have it? Because, like, you weren't no. quite, you're saying, like, oh, yeah, I miss it. And you have freedom when you don't use it. But what kind of um, thoughts like what is the difference between the thoughts? Because I've also done that. And I also try to have at least like one afternoon in mm -hmm. the weekend or one day where I do like less stuff. I don't, I don't care about technology that much. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that I cannot do the things yeah. I cannot do operational work. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the right way of saying it. Like I can still be on my laptop. I just cannot be executing. Yeah. To me, that's the difference between reflection and doing, doing, doing. So I want to get to, I wanted to know your thoughts of like, what are the different thoughts that come to you? So I think mainly what, what, when I, when I sort of observed myself was that um, when I'm not on my, mainly when I'm on my laptop, I'm working and I'm making progress. And uh, when I'm not doing that, I feel like there's so many things I still have to do, so many things that I still have to work on, that it's actually sometimes a hard time for me to take a break. Because mm -hmm. I always, if, if, I, if I do that, I feel like I'm not making progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was also sort of a realization for me that makes kind, kind of sense, of course, but it's still a realization that, you know, there are still hundreds of things, of thousands of things that I have to do now. But even in 40 years when I'm 65, there's still going to be a thousand things to work on then too. So it was basically the feeling, like the reason why uh, it felt sort of that I should be on a laptop a lot more uh, is because there's always more things to do. Uh, but realizing that there's always going to be more things to do in the end. So it's okay to take a, a day off as well. Uh, and that was mainly the anxiety that I was sort of self-creating there, feeling that I'm not making or working on things uh, when I'm not on my laptop. Okay, interesting. Makes, yeah. Uh, this actually makes me think of a conversation we had. I still remember when and like it was probably like the first year or the second year we knew each other. Yeah, and we how? were having the conversation in the gym. That's where we <laughs> met. Marvin, did you know where I, me and Yelis met, right? No, I was just, uh, I didn't want to interrupt, but I, I wanted to know your love story because I, I don't know where you <laughs> went. I, it must have been Please, time. Philip, right, share, share our love story. No, actually, this is like super, super interesting because I, at that moment, I, uh, I read a book and it blew my mind off. 
and uh, <laughs> the name of the book is do you know which one yeah, yeah. I, I i'm i'm quite sure i know which one yeah all right so it's the the power of now <laughs> and like exactly what you just told me right now that's exactly the power of now like yep. are you happy in this moment but look i'm happier it's not like i'm not happy or something but can you in first i uh no, but like, I think everybody has that. Like, are you happy in this moment? And I was reading this book and it's like 200 pages. And in every page, it says the same thing. Um, and I only got it like at the last page. Mm -hmm. uh, but it basically says like, are you happy in this moment? And um, that basically means that you can still have goals, but you need to be happy right now and then achieve your goals just because you want to achieve your goal. Not... I'm going to be happy if I have done that or if mm. I achieve that goal or if I, and it feels a little bit like technology, like is linked a little bit to that because like, if I'm not working, if I'm not making progress, I feel I should be working and I should be making progress. Whereas it's perfectly fine to like chill out a little bit. Sure. That but it's my... also, it, it's also, of course, if you have your own company or your own business, you do feel more pressure, right? Because it's your thing. You are, you know, it, it's you who has to move it further. But by the way, it's not like I can take a break. It's not like I don't do things besides working, of course, before anyone thinks that. Uh, but it's just sometimes a challenge to, to allow myself to take a break because, you know, I am the one who in the end uh, has to move my own company further, right? And so there is definitely more responsibility uh, that I have to put work in. And, uh, and then sometimes it can be a little bit challenging for me to take a break and be okay with that. So I'm more now playing with that uh, to implement a day, like a, a non-technology day uh, in a week. Nice. Yeah, yeah, but you, any, any thoughts of you guys uh, on, on things that you, is, I don't know, maybe you can resonate in this or, or you have some different thoughts on that? Nah, bro, I don't have those problems. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in your villa then. then. <laughs> I'm chilling in my villa. I'm happy, man. Yeah, you have a nice background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like Marvin, like, can't you, cause you have your, your own business as well. Like, uh, can't you resonate in, in, in some ways with what I just shared? I was, I was thinking about this like maybe two, three weeks ago. And, um, I was just making a list in my head. What are the pros and the cons of having, you know, I'm, I'm having two laptops actually right here. Like this is my work laptop, which has a bigger, better microphone. That's why I'm using that. And I have a private one. So I'm trying to really like divide things. So I have, a bunch of devices that I just use for work. Uh, and I don't even watch YouTube videos or something on them. Like on maybe, that laptop. Yeah. Like this is solely for work. There's, uh, I mean, emails are synced and this sort of stuff, but like, this is just my work thing. Um, and I would never use it. Or I would never buy a device like that. Or, uh, Yelis, you and I, we were talking about the iPad. Like I'm just using that device for work. I would never, sit my like be in bed and watch a netflix show on that ipad just because i don't think it makes sense as a private device that specific one so i'm trying to organize that a bit more because i don't want work and private life to just go together all the time which has happened so many times to me i mean you probably know that you you know you you lay in bed and then you get an email and then you start re responding to it or at least i do it sometimes because it's something urgent or important and you're asking yourself, Hey, why can't it wait until business opens tomorrow morning again? Uh, so for me, I think it would be nice to implement a day like that. But then also I made in that list, I thought, well, it gives me so much freedom and like, I'm fascinated by being able to have so much knowledge and yeah, it's so much information that you need to organize what you want to know. There's a lot of stuff that you don't need to know. But I think just having the freedom of basically knowing everything is super fascinating, I think. Like just the things that you can do with that device is crazy. Like just the thing that you can do with your phone, the, like 
I was thinking for that podcast, um, we were making this list and I was thinking about the item that's most important to me. And I just bought a piano and I thought, well, this is amazing. I love this thing. Or I thought about a guitar and I would love to say an instrument, but this thing is able to connect me to you guys, for example, to anyone in the world. Uh, you can make money off it. You can do whatever off it. And I think this is even more important, unfortunately, than an instrument or my camera or whatever, because yeah, I can call my grandma when I'm in fucking Madagascar and I can do so many things with that and take photos and listen to music and do so many things that I, I think it's really hard to separate yourself from the device, at least for me. Mm. Yeah. I agree. And we're kind of, I think we're kind of cyborgs, like people start to implement chips in themselves. But I think we don't realize that this is an extension of ourselves. Oh like, yeah, it's the remote, right? it's the remote to life, basically. This is, this is your brain, this is your memory, this is so much. Like, yeah. I think this is super fascinating. Well, that's why, that's why people freak out when they lose their phone because it's, yeah. it's their extension that they're losing. When, when I was in Japan, I saw people with three phones at the same <laughs> time. And I was wondering, like, okay, one's for business and one's for private. But what's the third for? Like, the mistress, bro. The mistress. Yeah, right, right, right. That, that's definitely possible, yeah. But this is something that I'm really annoyed by. Like, the, imagine someone would have told you 10 years ago that you need to charge so many devices. Like when I go through my devices, I need to charge my cameras. I need to charge the phone. Then maybe the business phone, the laptop, the iPad, the blah, 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 blah. This is annoying me so much. Well, but that's in your case, but your profession, right? And it's not yeah. for everyone that they have to charge that many things. But yeah, if you have cameras and all, then damn, you definitely have to charge a lot of things. I have about 12 batteries just for one camera. <laughs> damn. Only batteries are so bad, but <laughs> like. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, so that was a little uh, one thing out of the list that I had here that I wanted to share. Um, yeah, that's awesome. If uh, there's an, yeah, a thing out of your lists, then uh, go ahead. Marvin, I'll let you take the stage. <laughs> uh, well, there's a couple of things that I found very interesting. Uh, I, I would love to start with the problem that we're currently trying to resolve. Uh, because I was thinking about this. Wait, who is we? You and? All of us. Like, what problem are you currently having that you're trying to resolve? And, like, sometimes you even know the answer, but it's just the process of going through that. Um, okay. So if you have something to share, that would be very interesting. Actually, what I just shared, I would say would be sort of my well, problem, uh, but something that I'm sort of currently dealing or, or like, you know, uh, handling. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't directly can't, sh I, yeah, don't directly have something I would say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there's something you have. Is there something you have in, in business or in private life where you're thinking I, I really need to figure out a way or something that keeps up a lot of energy, not even like a problem in a negative way, but this mm. something that you're trying to solve, taking the next step. I don't know. Something like that. Well, because I was like two months or like basically three months in Bali because I was stuck there with the coronavirus, I ended up with five wives. So that's a little bit of a problem that I'm trying to figure out. If there's any, if you guys want one of them. Uh... <laughs> I mean, Philip looks like he doesn't have problems with his background. So I'm yeah, I put mine in like the back room. They're watching a movie. <laughs> Uh, you have space over there, Philip. You want a few more? Um, yeah, I got like my second villa. It's still empty. So I got <laughs> people to clean it. I need some people to clean it and stuff. Uh, no, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't directly have something actually besides what I shared in the beginning. All right. Awesome. Um, for me, I have like, I have um, not really a problem to share. Uh, because it's not necessarily something um, to solve for me directly, um, but it's like more of a general thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll bring it up after. You can uh, you can go first. I'm actually more excited about solving uh, other people's challenges than. Uh... <laughs> but I'll I'll bring mine up because it was my point that I wanted to bring up anyways. So all right, Marvin, go for it. 
Mm, I thought I thought about this, and I, I, I think what keeps me up the most is uh, first for the business we're we're implementing a team, so I have about two to five people that are going to start working with me. And can you that, first fill in? Sorry to interrupt, by the way. Can you first fill in what kind of business? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I I make photos uh, and I make films, so filmmaking, photography, but we're sort of um, growing into streaming and a lot of support and sort of advising in film industry. Mm -hmm. And I have two people um, that are starting to work with me sort of right now. One of them is uh, working at Pinewood Studios or was working at Pinewood Studios. Uh, so you know, he's a film editor. And then the other guy is more a stream specialist. And uh, this has been very interesting and sort of a problem of orientating and sort of building a team because so far I've been working by myself and sometimes with a small team but this is only for a day or a few days and now it's like okay these guys are from now on working with me on a lot of projects which is super exciting because it takes a, takes away a lot of work and more space to do bigger and cooler projects and things that I really want to do mm -hmm. um, but also it's kind of more serious because now people are dependent on the work that I do too. And they're still freelance. I, I, they're not employed or something, but they're like in the team and they're kind of, I'm required to give them work in the next few months so that they have their normal life and they can finance things and we can do cool projects. So this is something that I'm, I was very anxious about, but now I'm happy that I made the decision to do it. But it's a, like, it's the whole process of team building and sort of taking over the lead and like figuring out what we can do together. Uh, so this has been something that is very nice and it's um, challenging, but I really enjoy that. And then the other thing is, well, due to the virus, we can't do it right now, but uh, I wanted to do some more philanthropic work and um, like crisis photography and this sort of stuff. And this is really difficult to get into. I don't know why, but it so far has been so difficult. Like it's easier to get a client to pay or to be paid um, by then actually to go somewhere and do something for free and help them. It, it just seems to be much more difficult uh, so far. So these have been the two things that I've been focusing on a lot and sort of the main problems to be solved. So Awesome. Really yeah. cool problems, by the way. Yeah, I think um, you complain. <laughs> no, but like they're interesting, you know. Uh, it's like these are, to me, these like are more growing pains than problems. It's like opportunities arise and you don't know how to manage. So mm -hmm. I think that's good. And the only question for me is like, let's delve into like first the first and then the second. Um, but what is it about like the new people that makes you anxious? Mm, I think it's, it's more the pressure that I set to myself it's uh, their work is really good. So I can be happy about that. I, I'm not worried about the quality of the work that we deliver to the client. It's more like, you know, when you have that small idea of doing something and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, mm. kind of, it's kind of like a snowball and you're thinking, Jesus, this was a small idea. And now like a few months ago, I thought, Oh, maybe it'd be nice to have a team. And now there's people that I call every week and talk about things and like, we're, it, it's growing and sometimes it's faster than I thought. I thought by the end of this year, I can start working with one of them. Now I'm talking about two to five people at the same time. So <laughs> this is, this is something that I didn't expect. And it's really, it's a beautiful problem or a beautiful part, but uh, it's a bit fast sometimes. So I need to adjust really quickly to it. And um, I'm anxious about that. My work is more, like talking to people and managing people rather than what I love, which is making films and taking photos. So mm. this is something I need to be able to manage at the same time. Um, but I'm really happy to sort of explore, but uh, it mm. you know, raises a few questions. So very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, because actually, like I was, I, I'll let Yelis uh, answer first because I saw he had some uh, reaction. Yeah, I saw, I saw his reaction. <laughs> no, actually, go ahead, please, because uh, you were directly uh, continuing on this. Um, 
No, for me, it's very interesting to see the anxiousness because I, I think you are very similar to Yelis. I think he would have the same problem. Um, and I think that's also why he was reacting like that. Um, and I'm very opposite of that. I actually love that, talking to people, organizing, doing all that, much more than making the thing, like sure. making art doing the business, doing whatever. So I think it's like, um, like you have certain personalities, I guess. And some people are artists. And I think you both are artists. Some mm -hmm. people are more manager types. Other people are like, you have so many different personalities, but I think it's like, you need to uh, think very carefully. Like, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. um, of course, in every job, you need to do things that you don't like. Like if you want to be a movie director, I guess you'll have to work with people because otherwise it's going to be like very hard. Yeah. Um, but it's also like, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to be like the manager who's talking to everybody, but who's not really like doing it? Or, um, or do I want to focus on making movies and then have like, like another setup or do I have somebody else who's working with me, who is the manager type so I can focus on what I like most. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good point. And I also think by the way, that like in the beginning, you might be the one who's managing, but at some point, if you don't like it, you can replace yourself with someone else. Right? Yeah. So there is, um, Actually, my, my girlfriend and uh, my girlfriend, my brother's girlfriend. Jeez. Your girlfriend. All right. <laughs> Tell my, us my, about her. My brother's girlfriend, um, she's maybe at, point, at some point going to take at least the part of managing all the productions and uh, the, the jobs that are going on. So creating all the lists and seeing who's where and what's happening and, you know, the deadlines and all this stuff, because I don't want to sit in front of those programs and just do that all day i'd rather do that with her on the creative side i i would rather try to sort of create a standard with the other guys so that we're on a on a level that i can just give the, my work to them when i want to work on something else or like yeah so just just to for me to have more time and freedom to work on bigger things um, or other things um, or do philanthropic work to just be able to fly to Madagascar for a few weeks and help there and have them finish the jobs on the standard that we're all happy with. So I think that would be the, the goal. And um, of course that needs some work, but um, they're very good and I'm very excited. So uh, I think it will be a lot of fun. Well, I'm definitely excited actually to hear that you're uh, getting bigger than just you now, but uh, of course it's also scary at the same time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very fast. <laughs> That's but is awesome. it too fast? Like, is it like you don't want to, because it's okay. Like, is this going into the direction that you actually wanted to go? Yeah, but I thought it would like, be is this what you want to want to do? Yeah, that, this is when I originally started uh, filming, I didn't take photos back then. Um, yeah. What I wanted to do is film production. So, uh, or directing bigger films, commercials, uh, stories, like, like real movies. Um, and, you know, of course you can't unless you either work for a production company and then you work your way up within, the, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And I didn't want to do that. And also I was a student, student loan. I didn't have any money. So I needed to work and I didn't want to go back to like working at a cafe or something and working at a production company at the same time. So I thought, okay, I need to make money myself. So, and the only thing you can do then, at least for me, was commercial stuff. Because I, you can't just come up with a script and say, I'm going to shoot it and you don't have any money to shoot it because sure. you need people to work with you. So, but what I originally wanted to do is having a production company and creating our own movies. And I thought this would be something when I'm like 40 or 50. And now it starts to go that way that at least we have a team and we're starting to go that direction. And that's really, really cool. Like uh, it's mm -hmm. just, it came much faster than I thought but I'm happy to adapt and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And if it means that I need to manage people a little bit more than before, then that's okay. Um, well, it's possible. In, and especially if it's you who's building this up, it's definitely possible in the beginning that you have to manage people. But yeah. again, if, if it's not what you like and enjoy, then at some point you've got to be able to, to, to put uh, another person on that role. Yeah. 
-hmm. and that you can go on and do the content creation again yeah or the filming you know yeah yeah so i i I agree and especially with my brother's girlfriend uh she's very good at organizing things so i think she can take care of a lot of okay okay so i agree like find people who like what you don't like and let them handle it yeah that's basically the, the principle um and like what kind of like work do you do right now i'm super interested well, I would. I, I just. I was just waiting to pose that question to you too. Um, well, yeah, I do mostly commercials. Uh, I work. I can't say the names, but I work with bigger brands or smaller brands. Um, right now, we're doing a bit of fashion. Sports is sort of the main business, but we're sort of growing into other fields right now. Um, so. That's what I do. I do about 50% photo, 50% photogra- uh, filming. Mm-hmm. So uh, phot- photography is just very new. It's been like a year that I've been doing that, a bit less than that. And um, I- I'm seeing that you want to say something. <laughs> oh, I was just curious, actually. Why can't you say the companies or the like? Uh, just what? to give more privacy to the companies because some stuff is more private, like uh, stuff is coming out that you know hasn't happened yet or okay. hasn't. Yeah. So, uh, I just want to give my clients a bit more privacy because I, I want to make sure with them that we can talk about that. Um, Got it. But uh, yeah, so ma- mainly sports and now we're sort of dipping into other fields like fashion and a bunch of other stuff. So. And how do you get the new clients? <laughs> That's, um, I don't know, I've been, probably I've been very lucky, uh, but also uh, I spend or used to spend a lot of time sending emails, like cold emails, just sometimes like a hundred a day or something. And nice, good. I used to do that, and uh, you know, sometimes it brings cool things, like flying to the Philippines and working with a like fancy hotel, and you know, they pay everything, or you know, shooting crazy stuff in Canada. So th- th- sometimes it's worth it. Most of the people don't reply. Most of the people or th- then most of the people that who that reply, they are not interested, or uh, they will tell you, okay, we're gonna talk to you later, but they don't. But um, over time, the more references you have, the better your references are, um, the better your jobs are. You get more responses, and 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 the amount of people that are interested in you just grows. Uh, so I still do that. Um, I'm not in the need of doing it right now, luckily. But I still like doing that, for example. I like, uh, for example, when we can travel, I choose a spot like San Francisco, for example. And I will look for all the clients that I'm personally interested in working with. So mainly that's athletes or technology brands or whatever. And I'll write emails with like the references. And um, then a few people usually reply and are interested in. And then when I go to San Francisco, I have about 10 clients or whatever within the time that I'm there. So not only they pay for my trip, but they pay, you know, my income. So uh, I, for, example, for the team, we're getting someone who does that now full time. So a person that sends out emails almost every day, uh, yeah. so that we, th- this is happening. And um, yeah, I think that's also a thing that many people don't realize that you don't have to send just to 10 people emails, no. but to a hundred people, Yeah, you know, cause then maybe out of the hundreds, maybe 10 will reply. Yeah, and then maybe one is interested and yeah. might so, not work out. But if it works out, then you're lucky and then you get a client. Yep. I love the mindset. Like it's the, exactly the same as when we talked, I think, in Japan. Then you were also in like in this hustling mindset. And uh, like to me, it's like fascinating. Like where do you get the drive to keep sending emails and to keep like going at it? <laughs> I think it's part the anxiety of uh, because I don't have a stable job. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saving money and I'm investing in a few things that I can so far, mm-hmm. but the money is not safe. Like if things like now happen, most of my colleagues are fucked because there's so many deals. I have a good friend. He works on television for sports, uh, sports television stuff. And he lost his job for the next four months because they're closing all the sports stuff. So 
it's super unstable. So for me, it's always trying to get clients that are not affected by something like that. So a lot of online businesses and yeah, it just, uh, that gives me the push. And also I think I'm a creative person, but also have a bit of business in my brain. So for me, it's always like, okay, how can we do that? How can we make more passive income? How can we get more clients or more, uh, more important clients or clients that pay more well or mm -hmm. better, um, rather than just doing creative work. So that's what drives me. So a good amount of anxiety and a bit of interest in, in business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, necessity is the best uh, motivation mm -hmm. that exists. By the way, to, to, um, well, I mean, I don't want to switch per se, but, uh, to keep the conversation a bit dynamic. What was it? Uh, anything out of your list, uh, Philip? Yeah, exactly. Um, let me see. Actually, like the problem that I wrote down. Tell me about your problem. Yeah, let's yeah, fix it. I'm gonna take some tissues, guys. First, so <laughs> one second. <laughs> now, actually, I wanted to talk about, and this is more like an open conversation, and I don't want to talk too long uh, about this. Um, but wait, wait, do we have to set a timer or <laughs> no, but like, uh, you'll know why, like, okay. I think there are many people already talking about it. Like Marvin also brought it up. It's yeah. like the Corona. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to bring it up because like, it's not directly a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still doing okay. I'm still doing business. Um, but um, first, what are you doing? Sorry, but I, I don't know what you're doing right now. It's been a while that we talked. So maybe sum that up real quick. <laughs> so. All right. The quick summary. Uh, depending on how long of a summary you want, that will determine if we can uh, stream this or not. So basically, I work at a technology company. Yeah. Uh, we make software. I used to be a product manager there. So basically, like defining the best roadmap. one. What? The best one. The best one, of well, course. That's, that's just Philip. He's always the best one and everything. <laughs> um, try, at least trying to be the best one. Um, and then, like, since my long-term goal is to have my own company, um, you need to be able to sell. So I switched within the same company because it's a very, like, it seems like a very good company. Like, they win lots of awards, like best workplace, uh, best managed company last year, like top... 50 technology companies like stuff like that so for me that's good feedback of okay the company is growing fast and it's a good company to work at yeah. um and now i'm doing sales so i sell one of our softwares it's like erp like a financial software slash erp which yeah. is basically what bigger companies use to manage their financials budgets how they make plans for the future etc Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so quite big, big programs, which also you said in the beginning, like it takes a long time before people work with you. This is the same kind of product. Like it's a very big product. It's a big investment for firms. So mostly like a deal will take six months from the first time I meet the client to the day they sign a contract is like on average six months. So it means some yeah. contracts are one year, two years before they actually sign. So Damn. quite big and then so that's my main main uh, focus mm -hmm. and then i have some side projects uh that i'm doing as well yeah yeah um how many I actually like to quickly i invested in a, in a company right. okay wait and uh can you continue with the question that you were asking exactly yes uh oh wait what you were you were you were starting to pose a question, and you had a bit of a front story about the I think coronavirus, and and you were you were just starting to to pose your question. No, actually, like the the challenge I wanted to talk about was basically this, um, like how are you guys dealing with Corona? I don't want to talk about it too much, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that. It's like today I heard somebody <laughs> talk about Corona and it was like, man, I, I get more depressed from people talking about it yeah. than actually what it does. Because like, hey, um, I, I, I don't think I have it. 
Um, but like, how are you guys dealing with it? Like, is it affecting your life? And what do you guys recommend other people to stay safe? Because today I heard some statistics that are like ridiculous. Um, and it's like, for example, so many people will commit suicide because of Corona. That's like one. What do you mean with ridiculous, by the way? Oh, that, 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 okay, I get it, actually. That, that's the effect of the coronavirus that it's doing stuff, like, actually, where people yeah. commit suicide? Yeah. Okay, like, okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's true. crazy. Like, yeah. because we're in isolation, many people, they become depressed. If you're isolated and you're depressed, like, you're more likely to commit suicide. Yeah. So, not only is this, like, a, like, um, like a physical disease, but, like, the isolation brings so many other problems. Mental like yeah, I see yeah. people on Instagram posting like, oh, I'm so like super positive people that are like, oh, I don't want to work out. I have no energy. Um, like I'm losing my shit, like all this kind of yep. stuff. Um, and I just quickly wanted to ask you guys, like I'm, I'm feeling pretty okay. So I'll give some, some of my things as well, but how are you guys keeping up? Uh, are you staying safe and sane and how? Because I think yeah. that can help a lot of people. I think staying sane <laughs> is becoming more and more challenge for people the longer this is stretching. Uh, but in general, like me, me personally, I'm doing okay. Uh, but I'm definitely hearing more effects on the mental health level of like the well-being of people the longer this is lasting. Yeah. Uh, and mainly one of the, the tactics you could say that I'm applying in this scenario is that I'm, I mean, so. Okay, basically, the, the whole coronavirus is like a big pie, right? And if you just look at it, it's really hard to eat it all at once. And what I'm basically doing is like slicing, slicing it in like smaller pieces. So I'm, I'm basically, the main goal, the main thing that I'm focusing on is just making it through the day. I'm just focusing on one day after the other. That's the only thing that I mainly focus on when I'm feeling super over, overwhelmed, right? And right now I'm feeling not too overwhelmed or anything, but if I am, then I'm just going down to, to, to keeping things simpler and just coming down to just one day, this day, that's the only thing that I'm focusing on and that's it. And I think that could be a very helpful way. Otherwise it can become way too overwhelming as there is also no like end date on it to just focus on just this day. Uh, that's mainly what I would say that I'm using at the moment. It, it, there comes something to my mind, and this is something that you taught me, Yellis, which is posing yourself the question, what can you do about it? Because right. something overwhelms me, and this is what I learned from you. Mm -hmm. I just ask myself, like, what can I do about it? And there's absolutely nothing I can do about the virus. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I would love to travel. I lost a little bit of money, but like, like to go back to your question, Philip, for me, it didn't really change that much. Like I'm very lucky uh, to have, you know, a bunch of online clients that are actually requesting more because they have more view time. They have more people watching their stuff and uh, online clients like have uh, a great time or most of them right now. So for me, this actually has even helped a little bit. Mm. Um, but also I think in the long term, once the virus is sort of, less active or less present i think it will push at least my business a little bit more but of course that is just a suggestion or a thought that i, I that could happen or a guess um so yeah i ask myself when i feel overwhelmed uh what can i do about it and there's absolutely nothing um i'm trying to stay healthy so I'm, i have a bunch of calisthenics gear to, to train here but that's something that you could do about. You can, you, I mean, you can't do anything about the virus per se, right? But you can do something about you yeah. and your life. Yeah, like I think the most important thing is besides all the social distancing, and I agree with that, okay, you can do that. Uh, it's just to stay healthy in general. Yeah. Like uh, eat good food and train and boost up your immune system as much as you can. Uh, you know, moving as much as you can. Uh, I mean, I, I have a friend who's stuck in uh, Colombia he hasn't left the house for 42 days. Like, <laughs> what? This is crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, and especially in Colombia, man, I would be out every day. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know about the social distancing uh, rules right now. Yeah. Um, currently they're a bit tighter. So he hasn't left the house for such a long time. 
um, I would go crazy. So I try to go like early in the morning or at night. I go for a big walk. I train in my apartment, uh, try to eat healthy and, and see less people, but then the same people more frequently. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is, this is all I'm, I'm doing about it. Awesome. Yeah. Good. I mean, my I, battery almost died. One second. <laughs> God. <laughs> but I agree. Like, uh, Honestly, if you want to prepare for this virus, having a good immune system is the one thing that's going to help you uh, in increasing the chances of surviving it, right? Not drinking in, this for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, okay, sure. But in general, you're an active person, you sleep well, you know, those are already like you eat well. Yeah. If you drink a Coke in between, it doesn't matter too much, right? But in general, yes, it's just about having a good immune system to be able to fight bacteria or a virus like this yeah. to come through it. So I think I personally don't worry too much about like my parents or my grandparents because I know they're like super healthy. Mm. Uh, and I very much know that they are able to actually get through this if they would get it. Mm. Uh, and so if you want to do something, you know, uh, be able, yeah, just get your immune system up with having sleep. Wim Hof method is actually a really good one too then to get some cold exposure, cold showers. Probably, yeah. yeah. And just the basic things, right? Food, good food, water, sleep, sleep. working out. It's just yeah. simple. What about yeah. you? Uh, for me, the same. Um, I would say, I, I was actually thinking about this because so many people, and since we're like thinking about putting this out, it better be useful for some people. Yep. So I was thinking, okay, what do I do or what do people around me do that stay sane one and this is probably like the number one thing that helps you is do not watch the news mm. every day <laughs> and that's what you guys do like i know why yellis isn't worried because he he doesn't like he's not interested in shit like that he's yeah. interested in making his life better like making his business better like all that like positive people um, so I think like people who are watching the news every day and be reminded why it sucks and be reminded why some people are dying and be reminded why you cannot go to work. And like, that's like, mm -hmm. that's so bad. So I think that one is really important than what you guys said, eat well, sleep well, work out, like try to do something every day. Like I try to work out at noon uh during my noon break and that's like become like almost of a habit i don't do it every day but like regularly enough to keep me to keep me sane and i really know that when i don't work out at noon my afternoon i start like becoming like frustrated or like just like less motivated to work so those mm. things um are pretty good sleep well and then for the people who don't have a job or who like yeah. who, are, who cannot go to work, I would suggest like keep a routine, routine. like the, the times in my life where I was like the least productive and happy were the times where I didn't have a routine, where I wake up one day at 10 a.m. Like, no, I never wake up at 10, but like at nine or uh, then do not have any purpose in my day. Yeah, of course, like when you're not going to eat a good breakfast and we don't know what to do, like just find something that you want to do, like read a book, this is the perfect time to start reading or learning something new, like a new skill or something. You want to do something else with your life career wise or start making travel plans or whatever. There are so many things um, that you can do with your day. So keep a routine like of working out and getting up at the same time um, and then just doing something. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that I think is really key is speak to people like call your friends <laughs> call your colleagues like yeah. do not let yourself be isolated and think that you're uh alone in this world because that's what the world is going to like there are mm -hmm. more and more said it sometimes like there are more bigger and bigger cities and never have people in those cities felt so alone so i think mm -hmm. just call your friends post something on instagram post something something on facebook reply to people send text messages like call them i think that's like um if you do those things like they might really uh, help i agree and in general these are like very simple things but the key thing is in the end to actually do them 
Uh, but these are really good points. Um, yeah. And actually one thing, if, if like what you said about routine, and I really like that you said it, a routine actually gives a purpose. And that's a good link actually to make because a lot of times people are like, why should I have a routine? But it's actually because you have a purpose in a day on what you should do. And in general, like uh, having a purpose just in life is a great thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's nice. Um, but okay, that's good things actually that you shared. So, hmm. so that's enough. Like, I don't want to talk about COVID. Yeah. Like this way yeah. we, we have like brought a, a nice message. But look, okay, exactly. The corona thing. <laughs> we're, we're more casting some positive things, right? Some practical things to apply on that and not yeah. just ramble about it like a whole hour long. But I agree we shouldn't because it's already too much out, out there in, in the end. But I also think that we, we should... Uh, at least uh, us three, I think we're very, very lucky in the situations that we're in because, you know, there's many people that have very difficult situations and, sure. and people yeah. even in countries like Germany, Belgium or wherever. But uh, I think we are very much on the, on the lucky side. So maybe if some other people are in a situation that's more difficult, like my friend who, who is stuck in, in Colombia and he cannot fly home and he needs to fly home. Uh, to, to Germany, that's that's difficult already. But I think um, we are pretty much on the lucky side. Um, but I think there's also a lot of people that don't see the potential in that time. Um, right. Like so, I think you you guys are right. Make the best out of it. And um, if you are in a situation like we are, um, we shouldn't really complain. And mm -hmm. I, I agree. By the way, like who would have thought that not getting out of Colombia would have been a problem ever? <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, it seems like <laughs> I'm yeah. actually like uh, trying to plan a trip like December, January to South America. Oh, nice. really? I was thinking about going to South America too. Nice. Wait, any specific uh, place? Um, we're still discussing, but like with Corona, we'll see if we can Uber how to travel. But, um, the, the idea was to go to Costa Rica, um, maybe Brazil, like the, we're still like doubting, but that would be like a two, three week trip mm -hmm. uh, oh, where yeah. we take like a couple of planes and, uh, drive around a little bit, but it was, uh, Costa Rica was pretty sure and like do a surf camp or something like a couple of days. And then like drive to another country or whatever, like something like that. But it's Am still I... very vague and I'm not going to make any plans right now because yeah, yeah. Too, uh, too uncertain. Am I hearing that Bali made you want to surf more? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, right, Philip, on the trip, right? You went together. Yeah, so exactly. We went to uh, Bali uh, like two, two months or something ago. Uh, and Philip was like for two weeks, about two weeks there. And uh, yeah. And uh, he tried surfing for the first time. And to my surprise, it seems like you like it more uh, than I than you probably thought as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought I would hate it, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't seem like the surfing type of person. You know, like the typical surfer is like, yeah, bro, let's chill. Let's do some wave. Let's but then you think time. about I'm like the opposite like fuck it like i'm not gonna waste any time like i'm gonna do as many waves as i can <laughs> at least amount of time and then i'm gonna go back to work and then, then i'm gonna go to this place and then i'm gonna visit that and so yeah this is like a completely new thing but i i really liked it the only thing is that the back of my legs burned Ooh, like yeah. this is so weird <laughs> my whole body was like not burnt except for the back of my legs but I, so, I was paddling too much one thing you know how me and Marvin met, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, on a surfing camp, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. In By Australia. Way, can, you, can you believe that it, this has been like six years now? I know, man. I, each time when I think about like Australia, because that was a big trip actually for me. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. That's been like six years ago. And it, it's just so fast. And, and do you, ha I, this is a question that I've been wanting to ask you for years and just, it just comes to the front of my mind. So for me, I have a special relationship to Canada, to France, to Japan, but Australia and New Zealand, they're the, those beautiful places. I had amazing times there. I loved it when I was there. 
-hmm. But once I returned, for whatever reason that I haven't found yet, it's like, yeah, it's cool. I would go there for vacation, but I'm not, I, I don't feel the need to go back. And I know it's weird because it's so beautiful and there's so much stuff to do. I've been Maybe. thinking about traveling there for a trip, but like Canada or France or Japan, I'm like, okay, I want to go back there for as long as I can. Do you feel the same thing? Or can you? Yeah, really in a similar way. And I think I know why. Um, I mean, first of all, you were there more than one. I mean, you were there for a couple of months, right? So yeah. you already were able to see quite a lot of Australia in a way. But mm -hmm. also, I think the nature of Australia, of why people go there in general, are quite a lot of backpackers. And in yeah. most cases, they're quite young people. Yeah. So I think it could be a country right now that doesn't speak too much to you again because it's a different age category of why most people go there. Mm. And that's personally... <laughs> So I just see, <laughs> I just see Philip flag around for a second there, but that's I, I think that's one of the reasons, for example, why me personally I don't directly feel a need to go to Australia again. I've spent it multiple months there, and just in general, the people that I will meet when I'm will be traveling through there will be more younger people than people more my age. Not to say that there wouldn't be older ones too, right? And not to right. say that I'm super old either, but I think that could be one of the reasons. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense actually to you, what I just said now. Probably it does, yeah. Um, but there's also something about the country, I mean, or both of the countries, even New Zealand. I mean, New Zealand is so beautiful uh, and, and still, and I met amazing people. Uh, you remember, what was her name again in Tasmania? I've been thinking about this for, you remember who I mean? So Yellis and I, we were working in a, nature park like kind of like a national park in tasmania it was great it was amazing we had to scoop up a lot of uh, kangaroo <laughs> shit <laughs> but, we, but were... dude, we got to drive around in a truck and just watch over like to the kangaroos and just see that they were doing your rides it yeah. was so much it was a lot of fun actually and the tourists thought we were the rangers so we were yeah. like so proud and like the chinese people came to us and they were asking like hey uh do you know what this animal does and we were like no, you just scoop and shit. So <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, I know uh, the two girls, right? That were together, right? Kayla and... Oh, yeah. K K Kayla and Susie. No, S Susan. Susie. 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 Yeah. Jesus. So she was one of the rangers that was working there. And then there was like a younger girl that came now and then. And me and Marvin first thought... <laughs> That it was her daughter because she was like literally quite a lot younger and then we came to figure out that it was her girlfriend's <laughs> oh shit uh but uh, i mean great amazing people yeah. had so much fun with them together uh, uh yeah really great memories there <laughs> yeah. but there was one thing i wanted to say philip i love that you say you're not the typical surfer dude right yeah but then I remembered uh, learning about that, that Jocko Willing is a fucking surfer. Right. You really? This yeah. Guy surfing. Like, of course, the, the wave is just fucking flying away from him. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, but that wave and Jocko is on the board and this like 250 pound guy is crushing onto me. I just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, me too. Yeah. I would be afraid. Like, holy shit, Jocko's coming. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, that actually, that's very surprising. Like, yeah. I would say, like, yeah, that's uh, probably similar. Actually, go on YouTube and type in Jacko Willink, Willink and then surfing and just hear what he has to say about surfing because it's yeah. maybe more that you can resonate with. It's, yeah, nice. I think, because uh, okay. it's true, you have this view I'm of... Gonna note it down. <laughs> you have this... <laughs> just keep laughing when I see you move. I ju uh, you have this view of surfers that it, it has to be like, yeah, like long hair, really chilled. And there's some kind of stereotypes in, in some kind of sports, but it's not, yeah. There's so many people who can also prove that wrong, like Jack O'Willing, that you can also enjoy it and go very passionate and philosophical on those topics, yeah. uh, being a dude like that, for example. So, but check, check that. I, I think it uh, could resonate with you. But it's All right, I'm going to do it. I'm also going to look up uh, if, 
David Goggins is a surfer. That would be <laughs> I'm, I'm sure even more did. funny. <laughs> and it's, it's like it's like 10 p.m. It's dark and he's like, "Fuck it, man! I'm gonna keep going." <laughs> he would he would create waves in the ocean himself. <laughs> uh, uh, he, David Goggins. Yeah. But there's something about people that surf that are in a way they're like on a different level fit. Like if you look at Kelly Slater or um, how's that, how's that guy called who, who lives in Hawaii with his wife, Gabby. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gabby Reese. Um, and, and what's his name? Jesus. He also does Wim Hof a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has like this XPT or something. It's like his, his thing. What's his name? Uh, Gabby Reese. She's Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, Hamilton. What's his name? There's Hamilton. Yeah. These guys are old. Like they're like 50 something. And I think Laird Hamilton is even older. Let me see. Um, That's not that old. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> no, but like, if you think about the athletics, yeah, if you think about the athletics, there. You now you should look up The Rock. Like. <laughs> That's amazing. How old is he? 50, I think. Okay. But yeah. But sure, I mean, with surfing, uh, yeah, you don't need to be, I mean, you can still do it quite at an old age, I would say. Yeah, I, I would agree. But like, I, uh, I'm definitely going to look it up. But I, I think, um, yeah, surfing, it's good to, to have like, uh, to have something that's like completely against what you normally do, just to balance you out. Yeah, yeah. I very much agree. It was funny because my teacher, I took like a class and he was like the typical surfer. He was like 30 minutes late to the meeting. <laughs> like, I'm texting him like I'm in front of the shop and he's like, hey, hey, almost there. And then probably, nothing. He was probably on a wave. Like 10 minutes later, he like randomly texts me. I can see you. <laughs> like, what, dude? <laughs> And then he's like, yeah, it's crazy. Like he brought me back to the, because I hit my foot and I forgot my slippers. So I was like bleeding on my foot. So I didn't want to walk. So he brought me like with his scooter. His scooter, he didn't have like a speed, uh, oh, speed the meter. thing anymore. Like there was like the thing, but yeah. it was like all the way down, just like <laughs> on the bottom of the thing. It was like ridiculous. Dude, uh, I, had a, I had a similar experience in, in Japan. And there's a small island group, uh, group which is called Okinawa, which is I think oh, closer to Taiwan, and it, there's people, amazing right? diving, and it's really famous for surfing. And I had a client there. Uh, it was like an Australian, um, uh, like a like a surfer hotel sort of thing, and those were like three Australian dudes. They were all like in their 40s, 50s. They were drinking every day, and like this guy picks me up in like a like rain season weather and he like drives on the Japanese highway with like 150, 180 <laughs> with like his old fucking car. Everything is breaking down. And he was like, he just didn't care. He like, he passed by red traffic lights, nothing. Like he just didn't care. And he was like a fucking surfer dude too. So <laughs> maybe that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's definitely some stereotypes that with surfer, yeah, with, with others that they're probably quite relaxed. Many of them, most of them would be yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's let's see. By the way, <clears throat> um, any, any anything else uh, of of things that we picked out of the list? Um, I actually wanted to ask Marvin. Like, I recently watched two great movies. Uh, Actually, no, one great movie and one funny one. Like, it wasn't great in the terms of how it was made, but just very funny. Um, one is uh, Operation Odessa. That's the funny one. It's like on Netflix and it's a documentary about three guys who uh, try to sell um, a submarine, like a Are military you... submarine. <laughs> we were calling, Russians. <laughs> you were telling me this. Because... Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> this is the funniest shit ever. So you got these American guys, three mm -hmm. friends, who are trying to buy a military submarine during the Cold War from Russia to sell to Pablo Escobar. <laughs> is this a real story? It's a real story, man. They 
those guys are hilarious like first they go to russia to buy like motorcycles and then they buy like more shit and more and they make so much money doing it and they then they're like okay let's go to the next fucking level let's buy a fucking submarine <laughs> and it's about how they how they do it how the fbi is investigating them like one of them has like um an escort like uh, business like the guys are hilarious um so that's a movie that i wanted to ask if any of you saw it and like if it if you did but definitely check it out like yeah, it's it not works. it's not like wow this is great quality of filming it's just funny the guys are funny and then the second one and this one i think is very well made and it's called operation finale or open operation operation finale mm -hmm. i don't know if it's like a it's it sounds like a french title but it's like about the Mossad that will kidnap uh, Eichmann, who is a German mm -hmm. Nazi, and then um, like take him to Israel and put him to trial. Have you seen that one? No, but it seems very interesting. I saw it was uh, pro produced in the US and Argentina. Okay. Yeah. So. But that film is re for me I saw it and I was like damn it's really really well made like n no famous actors but I really it's a true story mm -hmm. uh, which I already like and I really liked the acting so if you get a chance to watch it like let me know what you think for sure for sure the, yeah I'm definitely gonna watch the documentary tonight <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a good movie <laughs> Uh, wait, and so uh, there are two different kind of movies, right? But uh, why or how come you like both of them so much? I'm going to go pee real quick because I had two, three beers. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, if you want to wait or if you like, if you want to. Yeah, if you want to wait for him uh, to explain. I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's continue. Let's continue. All right. The show must go on. Sure. Um, so, yes, because I'm curious to, to know what you enjoyed so much about uh, both of them. And they're both uh, different, right? So, yeah, just like the documentary, it's just a funny. What's like, the first one again? Ex Operation Odessa. Oh, Odessa? Operation Odessa? Or... Yeah. And the second one is Operation Final. All right. Oh, yeah, here. Oh, it's 2018. So, it's quite. Okay. It is quite recent, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just actually seeing some photos right now. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. That one I totally get because it's just a hilarious sounding movie already. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it's just you don't have to think. You just watch the guy and there is one guy who, like, the guy with who has, like, the, the, the dance club or how do you say it, like... Uh, strip club or... Strip club, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's funny because, like, he would arrange everything. Like, he has a strip club. If you want to get somebody killed, you can call him. If you want to get <laughs> drug shipped, you can call him. Like, he's, like, the guy who does everything. Um, like, there are three guys. Like, one is the, the guy with a strip club. He's the funniest guy. Then you have one who is, like, the, the cool guy, like, the, the sales guy. He buys and sells Ferraris, like really fast cars, speedboats, like he's the real deal. And then you have like the mafia guy who's like, I think he had like 35 passports or something like that. <laughs> he's still on, on the move. He, like people still, he's like on the most wanted list, like from different countries. Um, and he is like the link between Escobar and like the two Americans. Like it's just funny uh -huh. the other movie why did i like the other movie it's it's in like the story was told in a very nice way like i i got introduced into the history of israel and like right. the second world war it introduced me to the feelings of the people mm. like how they felt after the war because i like i know like lots of Jews were killed. I know that it was like 6 million people. I know how long the war was, but I actually didn't know like, damn, actually like the Jews, like how did they feel after the war? Like what? And like seeing them do the operation was like, fuck, they want justice because like everything that happened, I would do the same, man. Like I would try to fucking kill the guy. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then also it introduced me to the Mossad, which I got like very, very interested in, in like how did they pull off this operation and that operation. Can you first, sorry, them... can you first explain what the Mossad is? Marvin, do you know what the Mossad is? I think it's a, it's like a, it's like a secret service, secret, not secret service. How's it called? Like, um, not yeah. AGC, but like, a, yeah, yeah. uh, by the Israelis. And it was like one of the top like agents elites. It's like, yeah, it's like an elite group. I, I don't know if they actually officially still exist or if they had to close it down or whatever. Because but, of Corona or? <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> they were like, guys, let's shut this down. It's too. <laughs> oh, but that. that. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I agree. Uh, imagine. I mean, just honestly, the amount of companies and businesses that you wouldn't have expected to close uh, of this. And I mean, now, well, not to talk about it, but anyway. The, our, the name is, it, it's called, it's called, um, fuck now, intelligence agency. This is what we're looking for. Yes. This is the word. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, so that's, yeah. Okay. Go. Yeah. Sure. That's a very good summary. Like, and actually like, I didn't know the, the, the name was intelligence agency, but that's exactly what they did. I thought it was like a secret service, but it's an intelligent, yeah. intelligent, intelligent, fucking, you know what I, yeah. <laughs> intelligence yeah agency. um and they introduced me like this operation of eichmann put them on the map like worldwide like from this moment on everybody was like holy fuck they brought down like a nazi in that country where a lot of nazis were living the police was corrupt like it was very hard to get them um and then from that moment on they were included in lots of like operations with the us like egypt like all kinds of stuff and then i got into like how the fuck do they work and then it, i got interested in like spies like okay what is a spy what is this what does a spy do um and it's fucking crazy man like in the middle east how many spies there are and how important they were for wars i was completely unaware of this um like, yeah, I just didn't know. I thought a spy was like somebody who was like with like goggles <laughs> watching, <laughs> like, watching shit and then writing it down and sending an email or a telegram. That's not at all what they do, man. Like they infiltrate in like the 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 circle of the king and the circle of the president and they 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 have like this story about their identity, which is like fucked up how in detail that they have to study it. Like mm. It's not like, oh yeah, today I'm gonna be like a soccer, a retired soccer player uh, from Brussels. And no, it's like, where, what the fuck did you do? How did you get rich? Where are your parents? How many sisters do you have? Where does your cousin live? And then like, during one of the interviews, there was like a guy asking the spy, where, like, what happened to your parents? And then an easy answer is, oh, they died already. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then it's like, okay, move on to the next topic. But the guy asked, where are they buried? And if you cannot answer that, and you're in like the circle of your enemies who mm. fucking hate your guts, man, you're gonna go through a whole load of pain. Um, it's, yeah, to me, that was like just crazy to what kind of a length spies need to go to disguise their identity and how much fucking stress they need to have it's it's crazy okay okay there's definitely a difference between the two movies uh but this one sounds yeah that's a, doc a documentary right it's yeah it's like uh between a documentary and a movie about okay. like one operation of the Mossad. but it's super interesting well marvin if you were gonna look or watch uh, a documentary tonight could be a good one Maybe I'm gonna watch both. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have an early morning tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you guys have found recently? Movies, apps, websites, products, like cool yep. shit. I wanna try some new shit, you know? Like All I, right. I have nothing to do in my life. Like Corona is here, so So here's uh, some uh, a, a product that you both already have heard me talk about <laughs> but there's also an app with it no, so bro i want some new shit no it's new shit okay 
iPad Air, but I'm now actually using it also as a, a notebook to get notes on. So there's a great uh, app called Good Notes. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, but then I recently bought um, the Apple Pencil. And uh, actually, you know, let me try something here because I think I can actually screen mirror uh, this screen share. Then I can show how the app work works. All right, you guys can see that? Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, see, but honestly, instead of using like uh, just paper, this is such a great thing actually to use because uh, <laughs> it's super easy to draw uh, and there's so many possibilities. Like you can circle this, you can resize oh, it. You can circle shit, damn. You can... <laughs> Uh, but there's a marker um, and there's endless amount of paper. But uh, <laughs> and there's even even for presentation, you Shit, can. You should have told everybody that like everybody was going to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, instead of using a notebook like, OK, we, we both took uh, a wine course uh, last year, right? Uh, you and me, Philip. And uh, all the notes that I took on my notes, just on a paper notebook, if it would have been actually here on this, it, it would have been so much more practical because I can just more easily use it to on Evernote, uh, to go through it and to make adjustments. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I think, let me stop that here. Yeah. So far... Uh, I'm really happy actually uh, in using this instead of a paper notebook uh, as it's super practical. I think Marvin could use this for like his production maybe, no? Like yeah. to draw ideas. And I mean, yeah, that's actually possible. I mean... <laughs> well, you, you have the iPod, uh, the iPod, you have the uh, iPad Pro. Which yeah, is, so uh, original, this is the, there's a new one that just came out like two weeks ago, but... Pretty much, I'm using it for the same things that that Yelis is using. So I'm taking notes, and uh, it helps a lot when I'm with clients and we need to draw something. I'm not a great artist or whatever, so I don't really know how to draw. But um, like, you can draw a quick storyboard. Yeah. You can. What I really like is that you don't lose your notes. And sometimes I take notes for a client, for example, for a photo shoot. And then I have the notes directly on my on my computer while I'm working on it. So mm -hmm. I find that very helpful. It's not a device that I would ever use in a private life. It's way too big. It's way too expensive. Um, so I, I I wouldn't use it if I, I wouldn't work with it. But uh, it seems very well. And also the fact that you can edit photos on it. Um, if I would only do photos, I would only use that because it's strong enough to work on the photos and most of the clients just want a, a small JPEG, unfortunately. So, <laughs> yeah, this is actually one of the reasons why I didn't buy the iPad Pro because it, it feels a little bit too big compared to the iPod. Why do I say yeah, the iPad Air? Uh, it's definitely bigger than an iPod. <laughs> the, the thing is just that... And uh, it's also way too expensive and in, in general, it's sort of the thing that I don't want to walk around with such an ex expensive device, actually. Uh, and it's also too big just to practically use it, I feel. Uh, but I don't know. This, for me, uh, has been actually a really cool new thing to, uh, to use uh, good notes uh, and then with an Apple Pencil to take notes on. Uh, and it's just really practical to use. Uh, yeah, I like it. And does it sync with your laptop? I mean, you have just a whole bunch of settings. You can sync it with your laptop, sync it with Evernote. You, yeah, you, there's a lot of Evernote too. Damn, sure. that's nice. I like it. And yeah. uh, like, what do does Marvin use it for? Like, why do you prefer to write it down instead of like taking notes on your laptop? Mm, well, I first uh, I, I experiment a little bit with it. So when I take, for example. I do a review with a client. We have a bunch of photos or videos and we do a review. We meet up in person. Now it's more, of course, over the phone. So that's different. But 
uh, we meet up and we talk about certain things. Um, if I bring the laptop, usually they want me to edit right away at the, at, like on, on, on location. They want me to make changes right away, which is good, but also it consumes a lot of time. And mostly it doesn't make sense to edit at that time because you know time is really short and they want to fit as much as they can in the, into that half an hour, hour. So if I take the iPad, I can mark things in the video, I can mark things on the photo, I can write things down with them. We can yeah. access in a good quality, but I don't have the, like, I don't need to sit there with my hard drive and edit everything. So that was one thing. Also, makes sense. why I like it is, uh, if I do just need to work on photos, like let's say I'm going for a week trip and I don't edit video, I can take this. And this is like a, it's a, like a 13 inch laptop. Unfortunately, I, I, I like the 13 inch laptops more, but they are not as powerful and we're shooting on like high quality cameras. So we need something powerful. Um, so my laptop is very big, which I don't really like, but it does its job. And what do you mean with big? Like, or, uh, sorry, like I know like strong, like processing power or? Yeah, but therefore- I have a 13 inch laptop too. And I have like 16 RAM, one terabyte SSD. Like, is that good or is that not good? That's, I, I mean, for your purpose, and this is what I'm always saying, like for your purpose, it's perfect. If I wouldn't work in, in video work uh, or I wouldn't do any video work, I would never buy a laptop that's that expensive or something that's so powerful because you don't need it. Yeah. But I have like a eight core Intel i9 processor, which is like the strongest you can have for, for that sort of MacBook and very good graphic cards and, and everything that you sort of need for good video work. But therefore it's the 16 inch laptop, so it's quite big. So like if I would only do photo work for a week or two, let's say I'm going on a work trip, but I only do photo work, I can edit the photos on this. Yeah. And it's much smaller, lighter, so I, I like that. Uh, and yeah, we do floor plans and we draw on it and it's this sort of stuff. So it's been very useful. You can also set it up with a camera so it's a screen, yeah. which I like. So I can put it somewhere where the client can look at something or one of my team members can control something over that thing. So therefore, it's really good. Uh, as a private device, as I said, I would never use it. Okay. okay. Well, actually, and, and I would have never actually bought an iPad because uh, I actually bought it because my laptop broke. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and uh, I would have actually never thought of buying it, but now that I have it, it's, uh, I really love it actually as an, uh, extra, uh, device because it really improves my workflow. Cause do you also know Duet? It's, yeah. uh, yeah. So you can actually use it. It's, it's, um, a program and, uh, that you can actually use, uh, your iPad as a second monitor and then you just connect it with the USB. Uh, to your computer and then you have a second monitor and so it, it's just so multifunctional for so many reasons and uh, i actually do use it more for my personal life uh for like watching like you know courses on udemy or like netflix uh as it's a different device my computer my laptop is more for work things and this is more just an extra device that's in there uh that i use more for personal things um and to make my workflow just a bit easier. I have so, exactly the same. Right, yeah. I also have an iPad and it's also more light, extra gadgets, like not for pure work, but still like some productive stuff, but not work work. Mm. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah. What's a device or something that you really like at the moment or something that you, that really, uh, like an item, it doesn't need to be technology, something that you really just enjoy at the moment? Um, I have a couple. Uh, one thing that I really, really like is I got from the company I work at, we get like a gift every year. And this year we got a Sonos speaker. The and Sonos one. Sonos, I don't know the name, but like it's the normal one, but I also have the Sonos Move now. Mm -hmm. And the Sonos Move, man, it is, that's a piece of technology. It is quite expensive. Sonos Wait, is. I actually don't know. It's just, it's a speaker? It is a speaker. Like but from Boza, for example? Like a. Just like Boza. Yeah. The only okay. difference is that the quality is like 
double as good. Okay. Um, I I only used like the move in like a living room, which is quite big, and it was like a club, like it was <laughs> that loud. You can like I can organize a party in like a big apartment with one of them. Uh-huh. I now have two boxes, but with only one, and it's like lit up. Uh, the quality is amazing, and the, the beautiful thing is with Sonos, it works on Wi-Fi. So I just go on my phone. And I put on my Spotify or whatever, and I can choose where do I want to play. Do I want to play in the living room? And then in the living room, I can set up multiple like speakers, mm-hmm. and then I can just go around in my house and then just like activate speakers whenever I want, or group them, uh, or split them up. It's like the quality is amazing, and it's both Wi-Fi, so I can do that, and it's also the Sonos Move is also Bluetooth. So if you go outside or you, you want to take it somewhere, you can just activate Bluetooth and it still works. Like nice. that is to me a beautiful, beautiful piece of like equipment that I'm Damn. like, I would be proud to be the owner of that company. Like that's like a, a unique product, which is, uh, it is expensive, but it's like, it's yeah. so good. It's, it's about, I use it every day, every day. It's about 400 euros, like it's 375 euros. Uh, Sonos Move. Uh, and you say it's even better than Bose. Much better. I have this, the Bose um, Soundlink 2, which is a great little speaker. Yeah. Uh, I actually brought it, I think, to Bali. Yeah. Um, like it's a great speaker. It's just not on the same level as Sonos. Damn. You have to experience it. All right, throw a party and uh, invite us. Yeah, are you gonna yes. invite us? I'm actually like, I will. Like, once the corona is over next and I'll year, be in Brussels, I'll. Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks like a good, looks like a, a nice device, actually. Looks very clean. I, I I, by the way, do you know, like, originally Kevin Rose uh, talked about this shit. All right. And then I was like, but it's like, like, it's really expensive for like just the speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's like one piece of one product that I really like. Mm. Nice. Uh, if there's one that I could think of right now, besides the uh, iPads, uh, it, it would actually be, it's a laptop stand uh, from the company called Roost and costs maybe like I don't know, 35 euros, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's so good. It's so high quality. uh, And it just, it's really nice to use uh, to have your laptop a little bit higher. Good for your neck. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, I I don't know. I like it a lot. Uh, Have had it now for quite a few months uh, and uh, haven't regretted it. Uh, I think it's a great thing. So each time when I use it, it's, it's like, it's one of those products when even, even after so many months now of having it, each time that I use it, it still feels, it still feels good. It still that, feels like, you know what? I, it, no, it still feels like this is a good product. You appreciate it that it's there. Yes. Yes. Like, I love that. This is exactly like, there's a book called Delivering Happiness uh, ah, from yeah. Tony Shea, I think. And he's like the CEO of Zappos and they like bring shoes and like their goal is not to sell shoes. Mm. Their goal is to deliver happiness that when people receive the box, they're like, oh, fuck, this is nice. nice. And I know the feeling that Yelis talks about because like every morning when I light up my Sonos, when I just wake up and I, I want to put on like some music, uh, it's just like, damn, this is <laughs> so nice. I look forward to using this product. And this is exactly the same, I think, what Apple has done in the past. Yeah. Like what Tesla is doing right now. Like Tesla owner, like Tesla, Tesla people. Exactly. Like that's, and it's, that's so inspiring. I want to build a product like that or a, or a service. Like sure. when people talk about you that they say like, damn, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be using this. I mean, from all the compliments that you can get from a service or a product, if that's the one that even after months of already having it, you still smile and still feel like happy to use it. That's the, that's the biggest compliment I think you can have. Yeah, I agree. 
And um, I think there's a lot of stuff that just adds on to your list of what I said, like you need to charge or things that you just have, like clutter stuff that you have. And, and I like every few months I go through the stuff that I have and I just try to get rid of things that I wouldn't miss. Mm. And, really? Uh, That's good, man. I had to read a book about that shit to do that. I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Wait, 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 which one? Which one? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I know the book that you want to, you don't want to say the name because everyone has been talking about this goddamn book. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? By I'll the... give you a clue. It's a Japanese book. <laughs> Jesus you... Oh, no, really? <laughs> by the way, there's also a Netflix series from uh, from her, Marie Kondo. Did you watch it? No, I didn't. But I know people that didn't it's know. It's going of... well, right? Yeah, but I know people that talked about her that didn't read her book and that were like, yeah, I, it's because of the Netflix series. And I was like, what? Okay. Crazy. Just her whole business but, is around cleaning people's house. But, <laughs> but, but honestly, it's... it's re- what? This is like the smartest move ever. This is something that everyone can do. Like I'm a bit more on the minimalistic side and even I could do that. Like I have maybe so much stuff that i don't need sure but i mean there's a whole philosophy behind it there's just a lot of passion actually behind what she does and you can definitely see that um and so dude like that book is really like it helped me a lot because i am not naturally somebody who's like super organized or whatever um and i'm also somebody's like maybe I will use this like five years from now once. Right. Okay, never mind. Next item. And that book really like it got rid of a lot of shit that I didn't need. So. And so to drop the title of the book, it's the, the magic of tidying up, I think. The life changing. The life, life changing yeah. magic by Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. Yeah. It's very good. It is good. Yeah. Like Marvin, what are some products? Uh, that mm. you love to use. I'm actually like thinking of some other shits. I have one more. Lo- love to use? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I talked with um, Yelis about this last week. Uh, actually, after we, we finished calling, um, I received my piano. I've never had a piano lesson. I, I When I moved to Canada, we just had a keyboard in the apartment. And I always wanted to play piano. I originally learned to play guitar. And there was something about piano that I really wanted to learn. And um, after, it's been like 10 years that I wanted to have a piano now. And now I just finally decided to buy a piano. It's like a digital piano. It's not like the fanciest. It's, a, it's been like, I think it was like 650 euros. So it's expensive, but for a piano, it's not that much. Um, but for me, it has been worth every, every cent. Uh, and even sometimes when I don't want to play, I will sort of discipline myself to play because um, I, I think sometimes I really want to play and I sit there for hours just playing, like in the dark room, just playing by myself. And sometimes, you know, I just got <laughs> like that I sounds can't... very weird, by the way. Like <laughs> sitting in a dark room playing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds weird. Are are you naked as well? Or? <laughs> I've been playing in underwear, and I don't have curtains, so my my, my neighbors uh, can directly look into the living room where where it stands. But like, um, I made this rule for me: like every morning after waking up, I need to play at least five minutes. Uh-huh. And, you know, after waking up, sometimes you, you don't want to, like, do something like that right away. But I made this rule, and every time I... I... Dude, sorry, Marvin, we're just going... <laughs> You're disciplining yourself to play every morning. Damn, bro. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> no, 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 I get it. And it's a very good, it's a very good practice. It, it's absolutely uh, amazing. I mean... I mean... <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> We're like five-year-olds. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but please go on. Yeah, so, so um, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it, like, <laughs> when, when I start playing, I, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I just... Yo, everybody can relate, man. <laughs> We've all <been> there. <laughs> oh. 
Well, yeah. So that's a that's a device that I really or like an item that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. mm, if I would go for a cheaper thing, I would like to have something that's not that expensive because. Uh, One thing, by the way, how come it took you ten years to find like? What was the thing right now after 10 years that you said like, okay, I'm going to buy a piano now? I, I think first it was money because 10 years ago, I, I couldn't just buy a piano, um, yeah. you know, frankly. And um, then, you know, I didn't know how to play. Like, well, yeah, okay, but you don't so know how to A long time I thought, well, okay, first I need to get classes and first I need to do this and that. And actually for me it was just really important to just buy it and now i know how to play chords and uh -huh. and that helps me a lot you can do so much with it like uh as i always say like with the basics if you just work on your basics you can do so much with that yeah and an easy way to actually sound beautiful playing piano is just playing chords yeah it's a very it, yeah it's a very easy way to actually sound really beautiful and it's super easy to learn that's what i've been doing so uh, i and i really enjoy it and uh yeah, so I don't know why it took me so long and I don't know, I just did it. And uh, what actually motivated me to do it now is um, um, I, I was a, or I am still a big fan of uh, Mac Miller and yeah. I liked his later music a lot too when it was more jazzy and sort of more wild and he was composing most of the stuff himself and playing piano and singing to it. And uh, I watched a documentary on him and I saw him having so much fun that it reminded me of buying a piano. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you know what? Why don't I just do it? I can return it if I don't like it. And then, uh, yeah, I, I got it and I was really, really happy or I'm still very happy with it. Nice. Well, I'm actually super glad that you bought it. And 10 years is definitely a good amount of time yeah. to not regret buying that, I think. <laughs> but good. Uh, uh, this is something... That's my only, I think, regret from mm. uh, from my youth that I never learned how to play, and I would also love to play piano, but I, know. I actually concluded that it's too late, and I also don't want to spend the time now. But maybe in the future I will. All right, so it it's more of a thing of now than that. Right now you don't want to spend the time on it. Yeah. Okay, because even learning. You don't have to spend hours, you know, even getting at some decent level, just doing half an hour every day could already bring you to a level. Right. Okay, but like half an hour is a big commitment. That's why so I told yes, you five but minutes it, in the morning, five at night. This for example, like yeah. Minimum that I do. You, you, you can use it as a way exactly to do it in the evening to sort of chill out and to relax. Uh, or, or in between when you're taking a break, I play piano and guitar whenever a lot of times when I'm actually taking a break. Yeah. yeah, I know, but you can only, I think that's my opinion. I don't know, but like, I think you can only start relaxing when you have a certain yeah. level of competency. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise like, you probably I go to the yeah. gym now and I, re I go there and I relax. Like, of course I'm like tired and like, but like, that's a kind of a relaxing. If you've never worked out and you yeah. go to work out, you're not going to relax. But I think it's the same yeah. thing here. That's true. Uh, yeah, in the beginning, with many things, it will bring more frustration, maybe, you know, because it's new. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but when you do know, then it's more fun, actually. I so, know, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And I think Marvin already has some skill of, uh, yeah. like, from his background. So, I think, by the way, um, Marvin, if you're like interested i have two more recommendations of like documentaries what <laughs> yeah. is from quincy jones quincy jones yes it is legendary like quincy jones is like a Ooh, music yeah. producer he's like a very good friend of i think ray charles um and his documentary is about his life yelis you would also really like it um it's super inspirational the guy's 80 years old he has friends all over the world. He's a legend. Um, he came up when black people had no rights or much less rights. Like he made his life through music. He had so many stories, so many adventures. It's amazing. By the way, he's 87. He was born in 19, yeah. 1933. Jeez. Exactly. 
He, he's an American record producer. Yeah. Yes, but he made music and he's also like, I think like if you're into music, I think you will really like it because he embodies like mm. the music. And I was hooked in the first minutes, like, uh, like his house. It's like, uh, it starts with like a scene with this wall with all records and like history. And it's like, man, if it's, I think it's the same with movies, but like if you're 80 and then you have like a beautiful house with like your history of like, legendary legendary songs you made um i think like that's the moment where you realize i uh, i fucking made it mm. um, do, do you think this exists i've been asking myself this in the recent days what's the point where you made it because i think it always moves with you yeah of course but like i think he i don't know like that's a very good question When maybe on that it? level, maybe if you were this crazy successful and good, but I've been asked by like my brother, he said, oh, wow, you made it. And I'm like, well, dude, I didn't make it yet. It's going to take years and years and years. It's going to take 50 years until I'm at some point close to somehow making it. Maybe like <laughs> this, this is probably never going to happen uh, to your, yeah. to your definition then. Yeah. But I have the same. I, I think I'm the same as you, Marvin. Like, uh, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. But like, I, I do think there is a point where if they're making a documentary about you and Dr. Dre is coming to you to interview you and he says like, you're my inspiration. Like you are the reason why I make music. Yeah, and then yeah. you have like all kinds of people like, I'm, I don't want to give away too much of the documentary, but like it's just inspiring wherever he goes, like all the top people in music, they're all like, oh, Quincy, how are you doing? Like, it's so nice to see you. Uh, you inspired me. Like, it's cool. It's right. cool. He inspired a generation of musicians. And the second one, Netflix? Netflix, yeah. yeah okay. And the second one, and this is my favorite documentary of all time on Netflix. Of all time. All right, here he comes. I think Yelis, I already um, talked about this with you, and this is called The Defiant Ones. And it is about Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, who's, mm -hmm. who make beats by Dr. Dre, like the headphones, and sell it to Apple. Mm. Um, and this is like a beautiful symphony, like it's four episodes, and you see how music, culture, and business intertwine. Right. For me, that was like, I, I watch it again and again and again. That's how much uh, I like it. So no obligation, guys, to watch it, but like just watch the trailer, and if it interests you, like, uh, yeah, watch it. All right. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at the reviews, and they're pretty amazing. It's my kind of series, so... You like you like the combination of business and culture and probably uh, and like another part like like passion you know that that, that combines and seems like a good good combination. Exactly, like business in general. Like if it's just a business documentary, I will probably like it too. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah, I I like, yeah, and I think you will like it too because I can see in you also like the link between like the artist and like the business uh, business person. So I, I would I would even say something more like I I never say I'm an artist. I never say I'm a business person. I I I'd rather say it's some sort of craft. That because it's it's something very physical. I love having a camera in my hands. I love building ideas. I think that's that's what I love the most, like telling stories, creating something with my own hands. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a I can't draw. Yannis and I were talking about this. I I can't draw. I can do anything like this. <laughs> like uh, all everything I draw looks absolutely horrible. <laughs> but um, I, I really I really like that. Right, but like art comes in so many forms there's probably amazing people who can draw who can't play music at all yeah right no. so it's not like that you're not talented if you can't draw oh no, no but yeah i i, I 
Yannis, would you ever say you're an artist because you're a photographer or you, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind actually saying that because what I do in the end is mainly create content mm. and that is a, a form of art. And I, and I do, I have talked with people actually about this, uh, someone else who also just struggled saying that she was an artist, despite what she was doing was definitely creating arts. Mm. And uh, I'm kind of curious to know how come that you have trouble saying that you're an artist. I don't know. Because uh, I, I... it's sort of like, uh, you know, accepting that you are something, you know, that you might have worked for for quite a lot of years. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think, I don't know. I, I just feel that a sort of craft or storytelling or like I've, I've never said I'm a director or something. I hope I haven't said that or I'm a producer or something. I always say I'm a filmmaker or photographer. Um, like you can call so many things the, or the same thing you can call so many different things. Um, I just res I, I just feel like I can identify myself more with a craft and creating the process of instead of just saying oh it's art you know I'm just coming up with I always have a negative connotation to to I'm an artist I don't know why I, I respect it when someone else says it but for me I don't think I want to identify with that well maybe because it's overused by by so many people maybe yeah. I can see I can see why you don't like it. Um, it might be because it's like it's something vague that people right. say yeah. on like parties that is like very superficial. Oh, sorry. Like it's like when somebody's like drink, drinking their wine in a special. Oh, yeah. But listen, I'm an artist. Yeah, That's yeah. why you don't understand me. You're not yeah, on this. Exactly. But like it's like something. Um, yeah. It, it's making something more important or more flashy than it is. Mm. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. For some people, of course, there are many people who say it without the, but like, I can definitely see how that's like, uh, yeah. But I agree. And it's not like I say, like, I'm an artist, but if someone says <laughs> that you are, or like that, I, I don't like minds, but it's also, the same. It's the same when people call themselves an entrepreneur. Oh, it's yeah, it's like exactly, that. it's super vague yeah. that I have no clue what the hell they're actually talking about and what they're doing. Yeah. I, I to don't, me, I that's... Don't... No, no, Sorry. continue. I, I don't like to say that either. I don't like to say the word business. I don't know, business person, businessman, entrepreneur. I don't, I don't <laughs> like anything like this. Like, I, I don't know. For me, this is really like the... The same with startup. These are like the bad words that, that I'm trying not to pick. Even if, if it's the same thing that I'm doing, like I, 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 it would be the same thing, but I'm just trying to sort of leave those words out of the conversation. But I don't mind when people say that and then actually explain what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Like I, but I also think that I used to be, or I think many people are, like if somebody says I'm an entrepreneur, it's like, wow, are you an entrepreneur? Damn, shit, that's so huge. And then when I hear I'm an entrepreneur and they do not say anything else, yeah. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like rolling my eyes. Because <laughs> you know better, right? It's like, like, okay, tell me what you do then. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because like being an entrepreneur, like you – it's not hard to actually like start a company yeah. or if people say that they're like serial entrepreneurs. <laughs> then, um, the question is if, if it's successful, what they've done or not. Right. That's the thing. Like most serial entrepreneurs, they do it like this successful ones. They build a business, they make it big. Then they start the second one. They make it big. The yeah. third one, but then there are like people who's like, yeah, I have like five businesses. <laughs> I'm like, ha I do one thing and I do not have enough hours in the day. Like, how is yeah. it possible to do? So it's like, yeah, sometimes. I know, and it's the same uh, in a, in a certain way when people say that they speak six languages. But like, what the hell does that mean? Like, just saying one words in a language doesn't mean that you speak it, right? Exactly. Okay. 
So you also said, Philip, that you had another device. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, which ones? Caught you off guard. Bam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, actually, like this is one thing that I, we all use it, but it's like Netflix. It's only like a month or so since I use it. Like before I had it, but I never watched it because I don't have the time or I didn't take the time. Mm -hmm. Now I have to say Netflix is like a really good um, product, but I would say it's a really good company because if you see what they made, it's incredible. Like not only the platform, but they make amazing movies. I know. Well. Like the best things that I see is like now if it says Netflix original, it's gonna be me, good, that's right? Like a quality label, yeah. Like Amazon Prime, <laughs> like Amazon Prime, like it's crazy, and that's like for a company that's in existence for like twenty years, not even twenty years, I think. Um, so for me, that's like also something I really, really uh, like and uh, take my head off. Is that is that something that? you would say is something underrated you know when things are really underrated or overrated like is that an example for you where you say this is so underrated or, or, or do you have anything else the the product underrated yeah. yeah yes but i think now many apps because like i did for a brief while like product management and stuff so i learned a lot about ux design like user experience mm -hmm. and it's like i think lots of apps are so well made uh they're so smooth like the first time like remember five years ago you opened an app and then you didn't know where to click or how to start mm. now you have apps that you've never i tested one today like go what it's like a mobility app yeah. thing man i use it for the first time it was so smooth and like the design it's like it's well made because it functions right like it doesn't crash it does what it's supposed to do but it's also explaining itself yeah not by a video just by the design itself and i think those things are super underrated yeah in general if you don't work in that field then you don't pay attention too much to that yeah like and so it's, for, for sure it's definitely uh, under underrated in that way it's, a, it's like websites. If you think about websites like 10, yeah. 15 years ago, <laughs> this was horrible. But now you have websites and you instantly know, I just need to scroll down. There's no fucking menu. It's all super simple and smooth. Yeah. It, like it's super beautiful. Like all the websites, like you sign up for, for a Squarespace or whatever, Wix or whatever. And it looks absolutely amazing. Like at yep. least I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an amateur at this, but... For me, it looks super good. And well, the good thing is that they actually make it for people who are amateurs. Yeah. And even them, even they can yeah. make it look professional. Like that's yeah. their goal, right? Yeah. And they 100% succeed already with that. It's, you don't need any skills, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. What are actually some of the apps that you guys use? Like outside of the normal, like Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, what are the apps that you guys use and that are helpful or just nice? You know, w one that actually, let's, one that directly comes to my mind now um, is actually Udemy, uh, but not as an instructor myself, but actually as a student. Uh, I recently started actually enrolling in a couple more courses on there and actually using uh, Udemy more. And it's such an amazing, uh, you know, website and uh, mobile app on the iPad uh, to use super smooth, well-designed and the amount of courses on there are so good of quality. Uh, and I mean, I'm producing courses myself, but it's also super interesting to see the, uh, the quality courses that other people are, are uh, cr crafting and creating. And I'm really enjoying it, actually using it myself nice yeah. so it's really good uh, uh, udemy's in interface is really good i think yeah so, and their mobile awesome. app is yeah. so good and this is why i also love using the ipads uh to actually follow courses on there because uh, that's where you can download them offline and it just works super smoothly on there 
So Any courses to recommend also? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, plug, plug. <laughs> can recommend all my courses, um, but one Just that I wipe up, guys, wipe up. <laughs> but uh, I mean, of course, I can recommend courses, but these are in topics that I'm interested in. But one that I'm following right now is, for example, one on character uh, drawing, like character mm -hmm. design, drawing characters. Like anime uh, or, or digital? Yeah, or, or? Uh, basically anime. Uh, and it's something of a new skill that I'm actually at the moment digging into more, uh, into drawing. And this is where you can use the iPad actually for that too. Uh, and um, yeah, and um, honestly, it's a course with over a 1,400 five-star ratings. It's wow. a really good one. And, and wow. the instructor is amazing. And I think the name is, is character design or something like that um but it's over 30 hours of material it's uh wow. if you ever want to pick up some drawing uh then i would recommend that course wow. <laughs> nice yeah that's that's the current one that i'm following any courses you could recommend to me that you have uh, followed or that seemed interesting uh french for beginners <laughs> <laughs> It will be very interesting for you, Philip, for you as well, uh, Marvin. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a beginner anymore. Um, I actually, yeah, uh, Seth Godin has also a, well, actually, I don't think this is a good one for you. It's more for freelancers, but Seth Godin has a course on Udemy. Uh, but is it's it actually, the online MBA? Uh, I can't remember the name, but I don't think okay. it's the online MBA. Uh, he has multiple ones, but this one was directed to freelancers. Okay. Um, but yeah, I can't directly think of a course actually that I could recommend to you. No worries. Besides the French for beginners uh, course. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell the story of <laughs> when we were uh, skiing? <laughs> uh, when we were in uh, Val de Hans. I don't know the story, so please share it. You don't or, know you were in the story, dude. Of course, but I can't. I can't remember which specific one that you're. You're. Uh... Uh, so, me, Yeris, and Jeroen, uh, we went for a skiing trip in Valtorance two years ago, and we went to a restaurant. And since Yeris didn't speak <laughs> French, I know he wanted not. to order stuff, <laughs> and he wanted to. Uh, uh, like just speak French. So sometimes he would ask like, okay, how do you say this or that or whatever? Just like he didn't, he didn't know much French then. Now it's like much better because like he listened to some audio and stuff. Still on a noob level uh, compared to you guys. Okay. And uh, then we were in a restaurant and he's like, okay, yeah, no, no, no. Let me, let me ask for the check. Um, and we're like, okay. And then I don't remember what we told you, but it was like, <laughs> hey, you, you can put the check in your ass or something. And, uh, <laughs> and it, Yelis was like practicing it like out loud. We're like, yeah, yeah, almost. No, 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 like this, like this. And it was like speaking it. And he was like, actually like 100% convinced that like this was like, can I please have the check? <laughs> uh, but I think I think like at the last moment we're like no 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 this is like this is too too much because it was like a fancy restaurant so we couldn't really uh... I, yeah I had horrible things like this when I when I learned Japanese and I was in Japan the first few weeks I asked someone if he is the toilet instead of where is the toilet <laughs> and this guy was and I mean he was Japanese so he's super polite and he looked at me and he's like. Huh? And I'm like, I need the toilet. And, and he's like, ah, he showed like downstairs. And uh, like, I remember a second time I was with my, with my um, girlfriend at that time uh, in France. I just moved from Canada to France and I met her parents and we we're in a fancy restaurant, sort of fancy. And I am telling her mother uh, that my girlfriend is always horny in bed instead of saying that <laughs> she's always warm in bed. And, <laughs> That was like one of the more uh, getting very intimate there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was embarrassing. So, uh, but you know, now I'm never gonna make that mistake again. Damn, nice. That's By the way, way, there is on YouTube. There is like a video 
of like an American guy who speaks Japanese or Chinese. I don't, I think it's Japanese, but I'm not entirely sure where he goes to like Japanese places and he just sits down and he speaks English. And then you can hear like the Japanese lady. So like, look at this fat ass. He's coming to eat here and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then he, and he like listens for like five minutes and then he speaks in uh, Japanese to them. Oh, it is hilarious. That's uh that's so good if you can do that man that's so good yeah, this, maybe this is the same guy but he i'm sure he's uh he speaks chinese he's completely white he looks american i think he's american or canadian and he speaks like fluent chinese and he goes to chinese people and tells them that he was adopted by chinese parents because his chinese is so good so he speaks with like different accents from the region and like he's wow. like extremely good i mean i don't speak any chinese but like he seems to be incredibly good and they are like oh wow you're you are you born here and he's like yeah i was born uh here or like my parents are chinese they adopted me this is this is super amazing like yeah yeah so guys out of the list is there anything else that you feel uh, like sharing or is there something else thing. that you want to talk uh to I, us I, I have something uh i i wrote this down but then i saw that someone else was faster than i was um interesting people that you have encountered or people that you've met uh, either in real life or online people that you've been fascinated by so i i don't know who wrote this down but i'm i i wanted to ask the same question so uh, this is really interesting that list by the way was a suggestion list not per se uh who was already going to talk about it so if you have someone then please share or are, are you more sh interested in our thing yeah no, i was I, i wanted to know who you are currently interested in like if there's a person that you're fascinated by maybe it's an old timer like mm. a, a person that you're always fascinated by because of what this person does or if you have someone new i have a bunch of people in my head but i would love to hear what you have to say okay all right i think i wrote that down but it was more as a topic suggestion not per se because i had someone uh but so if you guys have someone if you have one philip uh i wrote down three three that i'm currently interested by one is james clear mm -hmm. he wrote a book atomic habits Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a very, I read the book. It's a very good book. Um, it's yeah. basically like his, I think his contribution to, because like habits are quite well known now, but like his contribution is basically that he pulled out all the information from different sources and brought it together in a practical way to build habits. Okay. Um, but so the book is really good. I would suggest it, but I actually follow him on Twitter. Uh -huh. And he posts some of the, like, he posts brilliant stuff there. Like daily, he posts like things that you stop and think like for two minutes about and then continue with your day. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And he also has like a newsletter with like, I think 500,000 people or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I subscribe to him too. So he, it's just like common knowledge that he reminds you of um so that's why i'm uh, quite interested by him and then two others are in the investing world um one is warren buffett and the second one is ray dalio and why those two because uh with this like corona shit going down um i read the book of ray dalio two principles also legendary book uh, and he basically says like whatever happens now has happened in the past yeah. like 2000 years mm -hmm. right. and with corona it's just interesting to see how he sees the world and how it will change um and also right now apparently we're at the end of a 75 year cycle of basically like growth um in an economy What? I heard I heard the same thing by someone else. Uh, I was going to talk about it in a bit. This is fascinating. That's why it's blowing my mind. Amazing. Yeah, it's and it's 
it's very true because I hear it from different sources and different people are talking to me about this. And like, apparently I don't know, like I'm not, I don't know too much about it. It's still like something I've recently discovered and I'm like now delving into, but it's super fascinating that every, every 50 to 75 years, there is a new world order. For example, after um, the, the world war, for example, there was a new world <laughs> order. Before that, there was like maybe the industrial revolution and that like those big shifts shift everything in the world. Mm-hmm. Like everything from wealth distrib- distribution, like who will who is wealthy to who will be wealthy. And it's just interesting to see now what they are saying. And also Warren Buffett talks a lot about stocks, of course, and like what is value and how is it determined. And he doesn't buy... Like he says, Corona affects me, but not because airlines close in the now, like in the next four months, he's thinking about in 10 years, how will people travel? Mm. Um, And obviously that could change. Like Tesla could build like a tunnel from uh, America to Europe and we will take the tunnel instead of an airplane. Like that's probably a long, like uh, a long shot, but like, those kind of things happen like everything will happen digitally how will businesses change and stuff so those are the things that i'm currently uh really really fascinated about and i wish i could tell you more but i'm still um yeah about it all right that's some interesting or i I haven't heard of the 75 or the 50 to 75 year thing uh, but it makes sense actually so okay did you at any people uh recent ones that you felt very interested in marvin yeah yeah so uh i'm i, I have an all-time fascination uh with uh, tim Ferriss and joe rogan and there's a couple of others mm-hmm. I mean, they're a great inspiration i love the content that they're creating because it taught me to be very open-minded and actually yellis was the person that introduced me to uh podcasts and i remember when and where, and it was on the By road. By the way, I'm the original then, because yes. I probably introduced Yelich. Yeah, yeah. so I was- just I just wanted to, I actually just wanted to mention that this is the cycle right now. Philip meant, like introduced me to podcasts, uh, and I think even the first one could, could be Tim yeah. Ferriss. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then I mentioned it to you. The first one that you introduced me to was Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, right. Probably because on that on fire, and I hate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Entrepreneur, every <laughs> single time this guy was fucking shouting at us while we were driving through Iceland. And I was thinking, this All podcast right. stuff is shit. Then, no, no. Okay, so sorry to interrupt, but that was probably one of the the next sort of podcasts that I got into. But yeah, this was too. like years ago, and. It, it, it's called EO Fire Entrepreneurs on Fire, and not the, I mean it's a it's a good beginner podcast for entrepreneurs, right? It's nothing yeah. in depth, nothing complex, nothing going into the details. It's just to get you fired up. That's basically it. If I would listen to this now, I would also be like, "What the hell?" But here's a crazy thing. Here's a crazy thing that I'm actually super proud of. I think this was like three, four years ago that I said, like, one day I am gonna be on this podcast. And two years ago, I was a guest on that podcast. Nice. Yes. And I remember in Barcelona, getting the email from John, so the, the host, uh, that he asked me to come on the podcast. And I was like, what oh. the fuck? <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was Gary Vaynerchuk. That would, what? That, what do you mean? Yeah. No, I, I thought the, the, the uh, podcast that we listened to was Gary Vaynerchuk, but it was someone else then. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay, wait, wait. It could be Gary Vaynerchuk as well. Uh, but I know that EO Fire, like, that, was, that was one that I used to listen to quite a lot in the past. Yeah. I, I think uh, that- but then Gary Vaynerchuk, if, it could have been that I introduced you to the, him as well. And if you don't know him, uh, that you can get quite annoyed at how he talks. And actually, yeah. if you're talking about someone that yells, then it's probably him. I, I, think, I think I was putting them both together. The EO Fire, we were definitely listening, listening to. Yeah. And I thought it was Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, could be. Later, I was, yeah, I think he was a guest probably. I don't know. But uh-huh. uh, later, I was sort of confronting myself with Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm, I'm not opposed to him. I think he has great thoughts. I just think his message 
or his delivery is different. And I do like the delivery of, let's say, Tim Ferriss a lot because he's not, yeah. he's, he's not the busy, fucking crazy um, businessman. Yeah. I think he just seems to work smarter, which I really like. Like he has time to like go out and shoot guns or train or, you know, he's very smart about his actions. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's what he's portray like portraying and showing. Um, and he seems to be the guy that's all who has always time and is really enjoying his life. And besides, he's a su super successful guy, whereas Gary Vaynerchuk is just going after it every single day, not sleeping, no nothing. And I can identify myself more with Tim Ferriss. That's why I prefer his delivery. But I think they have a lot of similar messages and thoughts, which I think are just fair to do. But mm. besides those as an all-time runner, and, and I love Joe Rogan. I, I'm listening to his podcast almost every single day. Um, I am obsessed with Eric Weinstein, who was a guest on Joe Rogan, who has his yeah. own podcast. I've suggested it a couple of times. So couple that podcast... Times. That podcast is, by the way, called The Portal. Yeah. And Portal. It, I, I think it's, for me, it's sometimes very challenging because his uh, chain of thought is very quick. He's super smart. He is very well. Um, he's speaking very fast and very well. And I, I, for me, this is challenging sometimes. And he's very rational. Mm -hmm. But by the way, I, can you explain? Because I've seen the name come up a few times, but I've never, I don't know what he does or He's the, he's the brother of Brett Weinstein, who was like in, in this, um, uh, this, this um, how's it called? This college problem that they have with uh, social justice warriors. But also he's a mathematician for uh, Peter Thiel. So for Thiel, um, okay. what's, what's yeah. Thiel in International, whatever this, his company. Is it like the, the company who uh, decodes like... Um... Jesus. Sorry, guys. I was. No worries. Sorry. Um, um, is it Thiel like Investment. Peter Thiel's investment firm or the uh, the thing where they. Okay. Yeah. So Thiel, Thiel's investment firm. Um, and he's also a friend of his. And, and I, I just really like the way that he's being rational about almost every single thing. And yeah. uh, I, I really find it very admiring. I really like, uh, like his way of thinking so um so you can kind of put him in, in 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 sort of the list of like uh jordan peterson and sam harris in a way that they're they're all super super rational thinking they don't go emotionally in any subject they just really try to understand uh the subject and just come from a very rational point which is and the opposite of what i do and, and and i really like to sort of learn from them because yep. i'm more of an emotional thinker mm rather than rational, but I yeah. like the rationality and I like it as it makes sense to me. And I yeah. think it's good to have both parts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't agree with them or a, a lot of times, but I can learn so much out of every conversation, every sentence that he is saying or Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris is saying. Sometimes I don't even agree with their opinion, but- Of course, and that's fine, right? Yeah, and, and what I really like about them is that they are discussing on a very high level but there's a lot of respect mm. and there's even if they're discussing a topic that they both don't agree, let's say Sam Harris and Eric Weinstein, they, they give each other the space to talk about stuff. And I think this is really great. I, I really enjoy that. So if I don't want to listen to a three hour conversation of Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz <laughs> telling great stories. Dude, uh, I love Joey Diaz. He's amazing. <laughs> But now he's like repeating too many stories. Yeah. I stopped. I stopped listening. But like Joey Diaz, man, I love that guy. Can you imagine that I actually have not yet listened to uh, an episode with Joe Rogan and, and Joey? No, Diaz? No, I cannot. How can you? How can you? <laughs> Just I'm okay. You I'll, I'll give you a tip. This is what I do uh, when I'm like completely when I want to relax. There mm. is a compilation of Joey Diaz. Oh yeah. There are four compilations, man. <laughs> okay. They are hilarious. This guy, from a storytelling point of view, I think Joey Diaz is the person that is most interesting in the world. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I actually like listened to like for a period of time. I just listened to the way he told stories. Yeah. Okay. He is 
he can draw you in in a way that's like with his pauses and the intonation and then he's like it's amazing this You're... guy has a million life he's lived a million life with yes. his stories and he has you can feel his heart and his goodness like he how, yeah. how he, thinking mm. and then on the other side he tells you the stories of being i don't want to th say too much for you yellows but uh, like <laughs> don't spoil crazy criminal that did crazy things. yes like, what all right and you see him and you're like this guy did this like what the fuck is going on he's amazing like yeah all right you're you're like, definitely selling you him you will laugh more. your ass up yeah. off about him kidnapping somebody yeah you will <laughs> laugh about it you're like oh this is the funniest guy ever or like shitting in the garden or whatever he has so many stories like it's, it's really amazing you know who is also to me a very funny storyteller uh, storyteller eddie bravo oh yeah yeah i, I like it we're just completely different yeah. yeah i like his stories yeah he's a very funny character too yeah so so those are the people that i i really uh focus on at the moment um uh, yeah so i like to me joe rogan is also one of the people who has made it in my opinion yeah. like he does what he loves yes he he just has conversations with people he loves and he makes millions from it yeah um he does comedy because he likes comedy he he does ufc because he loves martial arts and he loves he does podcasts because he likes speaking to interesting people i know i, th I think it's so amazing just that there is finally something like where people can talk even if you oppose to their opinion and he has had people like um ben shapiro whatever like there's many things that i wouldn't agree with but i find so amazing that he has space to talk and like they actually engage in a real conversation mm. and they discuss and they don't agree and still they're nice to each other. And, and I think that's so beautiful. And I think he's like, I think he's one of the most influential people because of that. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that podcast, the Joe Rogan experience is the most listened to podcast just in, in, in the whole world. I mean, he has millions of views on, on three hour conversations with Joey Diaz talking about places where he took a shit. <laughs> and then he has, on, and the next day he has, he has a conversation with, I don't know, some uh, physician or with uh, people that had crazy lives or have crazy lives, people that have experienced things that's, uh, that are just really interesting to listen to and learn from. And I think that's so great. Like, I, mm. I think this must be so amazing just to have a conversation and, and, getting paid for that and being so genuine like he seems to be but i think that's really cool yeah. yeah but if you talk about people who made it uh joe rogan for me is definitely an example as well if you just look why it's basically he just loves and enjoy he just enjoys his life yeah like that for me is a pretty good definition of of someone who made it yeah and also he he's not like he like i think he has more time than tim ferris for example like he goes out on bow hunting trips and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, and what a life. What I love is that he seems like the fucking gym head and like the fucking martial artist who just likes to fight. And he's such a smart person of what I've seen. I don't know yeah. him personally, but I um, love he's breaking the stereotype. Like he's tattooed, he's fucking buff, he smokes weed, but then he can... He can keep up with a mathematician like Eric Weinstein, who's just like intellectually on a level that, that, that's really high. And I love that. I love yeah. that this gym guy uh, who commentates martial arts and is a comedian is so, so well-read, so articulate, so smart. I love that. I think that's amazing. Yeah, he goes yeah. against the stereotype of what most people would think. Yeah. So very inspiring. Yelis, you? Uh, uh, honestly, uh, okay. When I have to think about something, it means that probably nothing directly. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot and just pause. Th there isn't oh, actually yeah. at the moment directly someone. Take your time. 
<laughs> okay, if you have half an hour, I can uh, do some research. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I, I, th there isn't someone directly that actually comes to my mind uh, that I've been paying a lot of attention to. Um, Sarah Underwood. <laughs> besides, besides her, then of course, and some other, know. some other Instagram <laughs> models. <laughs> Marvin, do you know Sarah Underwood? No, I'm gonna Google her. Well, she's Google. also a mathematician. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's a uh, yeah. She yes, she sure. once she once was able to crash Instagram. Oh Jesus! Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah. Okay, I understand why you're kind of fascinated. You found a photo. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I found very interesting about um, Eric Weinstein? He interviewed the girl, the woman that's oh yes, crazy. Ashley, Ashley. Ashley um, it was great. I actually recently listened to that as well, uh, and. Maybe you know her by a different name. Uh, yeah, Riley, Riley Reed. And everyone who doesn't know her name is fucking lying. Like, I don't know her name. <laughs> <laughs> Check her on Google, dude. Uh, you, will, you will know her. Uh, uh, yeah. but, but her name is Ash, Ashley Mat Matthew or Ashley yeah. Matthews, yes. But he actually interviewed her on his podcast because uh, Riley Reed is a character that she's playing, right? It's not like the real her. Uh, and basically the topic was about being a porn star and, and just the porn industry, but from just a very, just a rational point, not going into the details too much, of, you know, but, uh, seeing, seeing them actually, cause they, they many times don't seem to be a human porn stars. Uh, if you would walk into a porn star or, you know, and they would tell you that they are, <laughs> most people would not really come to, would not really except i don't know or be okay with that and basically the whole conversation was more about dehumanizing or how do you say uh just uh that of being a porn star uh but it was uh it was a, a interesting topic uh to, to to listen a bit about okay it's not much talked about actually it's not much oh, okay the topic yeah yeah no where, where a porn star is actually the one who does an interview because uh, a lot of times you also think they're like quite dumb people or I don't know what, right? Uh, but she was very formal, very well-spoken. Uh, yeah, it was a cool, interesting okay. interview. Okay. But I will check out Eric Weinstein. I, I actually, like, I know his name and I know he was on the Joe Rogan, but I never mm. uh, really listened to it or I don't know what he does or I'm unaware of him. Well, so if I have to mention a person of interest, uh, a recently interesting person, it would actually be him. Uh, I recently also sort of stumbled upon him through Joe Rogan. And I went to his podcasts uh, and listened to some episodes, which, which were really good. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's see. Um, are there some other things that you guys want to want to share or because we've been into the call now for what an, about two hours by the way i love this I, it's so much fun it's it's great yeah me too i uh, i like it too yeah. i think we should do like regular yeah like and update because it's also easier because now it's like who do you follow it's just like okay since last time since six months ago what's new yeah and then you can talk about that because uh, i i still have some things that i can that things that i want to just let me and marvin talk uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll leave, all right? I talk too much. <laughs> no, no, no I, go ahead. I'm not going to... I had a few more things, but for, because otherwise this, this, inter, uh, this you know, podcast might end up turning like four hours long. Maybe it could be for a next one. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's leave some topics on the table for next one. I also have some more topics, but uh, please yeah, like uh, bring up some more. I, ha I have a bunch of topics still, but... Uh... Yeah, maybe it would be good if we if we keep a few. Uh, yeah. So I think this could be a good point to sort of wrap it up. And uh, I think for the next call, we should all have a villa. <laughs> or, or, or our own. I'll invite unique... you guys over, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We should, if, we can, if we can, we should really do this in person. I mean, uh, we can of just course. Yeah. That would be the best. 
uh, experience to have. Um, but uh, it's just right now because of the coronavirus. <laughs> Once that's moved by, then uh, this we should definitely do in person because yeah. that would be amazing. And then, yeah, like let's make like a weekend out of it. Like either Marvin, you come to Belgium or we come to Germany and then we just go out, have some dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have some beers, like just get super wasted, right? And get by the way, fucked up. Ma so Marvin just moved into uh, uh, a new apartment in Düsseldorf, which, to be honest, in Düsseldorf, is... man, that's like we're neighbors almost. Basically, yeah, I'm close again. All right, so this was fun because I didn't want to get an apartment uh, and then be so far away all the time. Mm. And then the virus came. I, I still got the apartment because I didn't want to move. Like, I didn't want to miss the chance. It's a very nice apartment. I was very lucky to get it. And then the virus came and it was kind of like the perfect timing. I was like, okay, now I'm stuck here, but I have this apartment. It's great. I can do a lot of work here. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's fantastic. It was meant to be the apartment to just be at whenever I'm in Germany. Um, but now it's like a long time that I'm, I'm in Germany. So it's great. I'm, I'm very happy about it. Yeah. Then uh, it's definitely doable to come over, do a podcast there. Yeah. And uh, that would be amazing. That would be fun. Because uh, you gave me a little tour through your apartment. And for one, for one person, it's, it's a spacious apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you, it's, you, you, by the way, need, need, need some furniture. Because you yeah. definitely have some echo. I'm, I'm a, yeah, this is the office and there's no, nothing on the walls yet. I can hear. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a bit, um, it's a bit empty, but I also like that. I'm a bit on sure. the minimalistic side, so, so I, I like that. But uh, yeah, the walls need to be hung by pictures and, and paintings. I think you should meet uh, a good friend of mine, Jonathan. Mm. He's also very minimalistic. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> If yeah. he would like have a choice, he would just have a desk and a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. paper. That's it. Like he also has like nothing. I, he was not... like always telling me like, why, why do you have so many clothes? Like <laughs> just have three t-shirts, man. I'm like, bro, I, I like wearing different shit, you know? I, uh, I, but it's very minimalistic. I, I think, I'm more uh, fake minimalist. Like I, I have like a, like t-shirts, for example, I have a few black, white, and gray. This is all I have. I might have some gym clothes, but like then I have uh, like a few sweatshirts. But all, it's all pretty basic, no logos, no nothing. Um, but, but then I could have maybe 10 gu guitars or mm. uh, like, you know, so I'm, or like watches. I could have maybe 30, 40 watches if I could. I would just because I, I am interested in that. And then there's a few things that I, like I have four forks. I might, I should have a bit more and I have four or six plates and I'm happy with that. Like I don't need more, I don't need more than six glasses. I'm the same in that actually. When yeah. I had an apartment in Antwerp, I had two forks. Uh, that was it. Yeah. I you had know? 12. Yeah. <laughs> of everything. When is there the point where you have eleven guests at your house? Like I never Bro, have you never know. You never know. <laughs> I don't have that many friends. <laughs> but you just value different things, but, right? That's why you would have ten guitars, but yeah. you know, just three t shirts, for example. Um No, but to me, like I'm not joking with like minimalism i think it's really cool i uh mm -hmm. because jonathan i i respect that and i actually am moving more towards it uh mm -hmm. and it's actually interesting the less you have the more you value what you have yeah. Yeah. i agree yeah. and that's very um so but it's it's too still like hard for me to not keep things like for example now i have my sonos i will still keep my bose speaker mm. because I still like that one too, uh, but I, I should probably, actually just gift it away to somebody. Yeah, I, I would say yes. I think you should. My dad already asked me. I'm like, you can just use it, but it stays mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably gift it to him. But it's a good, I mean, honestly, if, it is, if it's not being used, it's being wasted in a way. Yeah. I agree, yeah. And I don't yeah. know, but for me, and I'm very 
very minimalistic to, um, you know, of course there's extremer ones, but it just, my head is already quite busy and it just helps if then the real outside world is less busy. It just helps to calm everything for me. And that's why I totally get for you, like Marvin, that like your office is just a table and a chair. I would basically have the same. It's, it's uh, a bit more than that, but yeah, of course, but yeah. Walls are empty, like everything is really cleaned up. I have a bit of a studio in the background. You can't see, I moved the lights, but like there's a bit of shit laying around, a bit of gym equipment, but like compared to other stuff, it's like really empty. And I like, especially, I like empty walls. So I put window, uh, I put um, paintings, for example, on the floor rather than hanging them. Most On of the floor? Yeah, I don't know why, I'm crazy. Um, and I put lamps, also like desk lamps, desktop lens, I put them on the floor, I don't know why. Uh, just because I like the clean space and I feel like I can think better. Yeah. Not that I'm thinking of crazy processes and I'm going crazy in my head, but just I have a bunch of color in my head. I told this to my mom, she's like, why everything gray and black and white? I said, I have so much color in my brain. Mm. That I, I get really confused by a lot of colors and everything. It's not that I don't like colors, not at all, I love them but it's just too much in my head. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. What you doesn't make- look up, You guys should look up like the famous picture of Steve Jobs in his apartment. Oh yeah. Uh, it, like, I know that one. Uh, it's, it's the same, same thing, like only the essentials. Uh, I remember, I, I, it's probably online, I read his book um, and it was in the book, uh, but it's like, he only has like a lamp, a chair, yeah and a music player and he's like these are the essential things that i need so i don't need more and he's like he has this ridiculous new york apartment huge like and he's also super minimalistic so it's 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 cool guys uh have you marvin have you always been like this i think like minimalist no i think clean, I like everything australia, clean. when i moved to australia it was the first time, or when i traveled to there it was the first time of like that I needed to decide what I need. Because mm, of your backpack, first, basically. When I moved to the US, I just took a bunch of shit. And even for compared to now, I took too much when I went to Australia. But it was the first time for me to put things in a backpack and say, this is what I need for my life. And mm. I remember I put things there that I would never <laughs> take again. But... Um, I think that was the case. And also my mom, uh, due to what happened to her in the past, she collects everything. She collects a lot. She has lost a lot of stuff in her life. So now she's recollecting a lot of things. Mm. Like 200 pairs of shoes. And like there's certain things that she has millions of things of. And I don't like that. And once I started to be very creative, I realized that things annoy me when they don't fit into place. So she, for example, she has two different sets of plates and she doesn't care that they're next to each other and she uses two. And I'm like, well, one is white and one is blue. Why don't you use one? Like one set. And she likes everything in color. She has, I don't know, 20 plants in the, in the living room. And like, I, I just don't get along with that. I don't like when everything is full of stuff. It really, like, I grew up this way. And I think that way I just sort of distanced myself from that. Mm. Um, interesting. Yeah. It is interesting. It, Go. I'm actually thinking, like, um, I'll be moving very soon into uh, another apartment in Brussels. And I'm actually thinking, instead of doing it the normal way where you just pack up your shit and go, mm. I will just take what I think I need. And if I need more, I will just come collect it later. I like that. Yeah, that's great. It's like the same thing what you guys did because you guys, it seems both learned it from backpacking. Yeah. yeah. For me, for sure. And no, for, for me I've too. I've never done that. So. And Yelis uh, is very extreme at it. I remember when we went to Vietnam, I mean, for video work, you need a bit more than photography or at least most of the stuff, depending on what production we did. Huh. Now I would probably shoot much more handheld, just one lens, but or two maybe. See, there's a yeah. <laughs> but <coughs> sorry, but I remember when Yelis and I went to Vietnam, he had a fucking 
35 liter backpack for like a month. And I already broke down to a lot of different shit. And yeah, we shot a movie, so we needed a bunch of stuff and camera and sound and light and whatever to have a higher quality movie. But like, um, I remember that I was so jealous and I was like, damn, this is the right way to go. So now, for example, I would always limit clothes and everything else and put gear first and then even limit the gear. Like I would ask myself 20 times, do I need a tripod? Do I really need a tripod? Do I need a tripod? Do I need this? Do I need really this microphone? Or can I shoot without sound, for example, just to make the experience better and also to challenge myself? So like now I would, for example, go on a trip and I told myself the next trip, I'm not going to take a microphone just so that I use the things that I have. And then in the edit, I just need to do sound design, whatever. Um, and I really like that. Yeah. And, and the thing with a backpack is actually that you're literally carrying the weight. So the more you carry the back, the more you're actually also going to suffer. Um, that, but that's the thing though. I don't, I don't have the immediate suffering okay like, and i wouldn't I have say more stuff but i don't physically have to i probably suffer in my mind of love having too much stuff but it's not as obvious as when you're carrying like the stuff all right and i wouldn't say that's the motivation of why uh in general i just i don't know i think it also has to do with the more that i have with me the more i can potentially lose and I think if I think of the, the driving forces of why I pack so minimalistic is that the less I have, the less I can actually lose. Mm. And okay. I think everyone has some different reasons, uh, but that to me is actually the main one that, you know, I am losing less if I lose all this. Um, I, yeah. I have a question for both of you. If you buy, for example, with my case, Sonos, I have... Sono speakers. As we speak in my room where I'm now at, I have Bose speakers for my laptop. I have the mini sound link and I have Sonos. Yep. This is ridiculous. Like, why do I have three ones? Um, what do you guys do if you buy something new? Do you throw away the old, like if you, let's say Marvin, you have four plates. If you, for some reason, get to five friends and you invite them, right? You'll need five plates. What do you do if you cannot buy one plate of the, f of the same set you have? Oh yeah, I, I have had this problem a couple of times that I wanted to buy just one and there's two. Um, then probably I would give that away to someone or, uh, yeah, I wouldn't throw it away because I wouldn't like that, but probably I would give that away for free. Um, I mean, I do have, for example, as I said, I have two laptops, for example, this is not minimalistic. I, and I have a bunch of other tech gear and uh, like some sort of backup stuff, but mostly I try to get exactly the amount that I have. And if I would have, for example, um, the three speakers that you have, uh, I would use the one that I like the most as of sound quality and as of um, how easy can I control it? How easy can I connect it? Can I connect it with all my things? If yes, I would just get the one that I like the most. And oftentimes I would buy something more expensive to have all of those things like connectability, uh, I don't know, design, quality, whatever. I'd rather spend a bit more money, not a hell lot, but a bit more money to have the better thing than to have a few normal things or not normal, but like average things. And like my parents, for example, they have everything. They have 20 of everything, literally everything. You can have 20 lighters, 20, uh, 20 knives, 20 this, 20 that. And I'm, I'd rather get something that's the same price for 20, but then just one, but then I can keep it for a long time too. I don't want to throw something away after two months. I, I don't want to throw it away. I want to give it away in 10 years or 20 years. I agree. I also try to buy like the good one, but uh, I still, so yeah, I need to like think more of replacing, like uh, not adding, but replacing. Yeah. And just 
you know, sometimes you, you just like something, so you want to keep it, and I think that's fine. Like, I wouldn't want to throw away a guitar. Like, I can't, I can't do that right now. And, I, and still, they're in the basement. I don't even touch them. I haven't played them for years, so it's really sort of fake minimalism. But there's some things like clothes, for example, where I don't really care. So, like, if I don't wear it, I just give it away. No matter what's the brand, no matter how expensive it was, no matter how often I wear it, if I, if I, or how often I wore it, if I don't like it anymore, and I catch myself not wearing it, it, it goes out. And it's the same with a bunch of stuff. Like, I just bought new towels, and I have some old ones that don't fit the same style because they're green, and I have gray ones. Of course, I put the green ones away. I don't need them as a backup. You know, I can wash almost every day uh, and it's like five towels or something. So I will keep them. If it's one too much, I will put it away. Okay. Yeah. So. Does this fix your problem, Philip? I am. Um, but listen, I'm getting closer. Like uh, I actually was thinking this in the last week. I've been much better with keeping stuff, doing stuff away, and also just having my shits organized. Before, I wouldn't care. Like, if my desk was, like, full of stuff, it wouldn't really affect me. No. Just sit down. I wouldn't even see it. Like, if people say, oh, you have three pencils on your desk, I would say, no, like, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Because I literally do not see them. But so then the question is basically, like, if you don't see it, does it matter? Like oh, yeah. if it does, if if it doesn't bother you, does it matter then? It doesn't, but I like the idea of a clean desk. It's just something I like that. I I want to aspire to that as well. Mm -hmm. Because for some people, they work better when there are some stuff on their desk. Yeah. For example, right? I know, like I think, like Gary Vaynerchuk. He has like, if you look at his vlogs <laughs> or or like his videos, he has a bunch of things on his desk. Uh, and for him it works. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do this, right? Or that you shouldn't get more cleaner or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know if you should put that much time and effort on it if it doesn't actually bother you in the first place. <laughs> don't worry, I won't put that much time in. <laughs> I will try to, Dude, like... Uh... You're going to be spending 24 hours every day on this now, worrying about this, you know? I'm just telling you, you don't have to do that. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, but let's go to your point. You wanted to bring something up. Me? Just before. Yeah. I you can't... said you wrote down some uh, stuff and you wanted to talk about one thing as like a closing... Um... No, I, what, I, what I was uh, saying is that I still have a few more things on there, but I think it would be better to actually keep it for a next call as right now we're already getting quite on a, a decent amount of time and like stretching it longer right now, uh, I don't feel is, uh, is going to be good for us and for anyone listening. Right. As it's also getting quite late at the moment here now right. and I'm getting hungry. This <laughs> <laughs> is hungry guys. All right, let's leave him. Not oh. hungry yet, but, uh, I would say that this is a good point for us to kind of wrap it up. I think it's been great fun actually to, to be able to do, have a conversation with you yeah, from a yeah. distance. And uh, it would be amazing for the next one uh, it, to actually have that in person if possible. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So is there any parting words or anything that you guys want to share or uh, are we at a good point? I, I would love to bet with you. And then the next time we meet, some, some, someone has to do something, the winner or get something or the losers get something. How many people are going to listen to that completely? I am going below five. <laughs> like, <laughs> if, I'm if, saying zero. I well, am so sorry for you that you have such a horrible life that you needed to listen to us. <laughs> come on. If someone is able to, to, to keep listening to this point, then at least it must have been entertaining. Hi, uh, Bob. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love to bet, but I have no idea how to track that, actually. Me neither. I have zero. Idea. Imagine we wake up and it has a 5 million views. And <laughs> yeah, let's, let's. 
if that would happen, then uh, that's a miracle, though. <laughs> Next time we interview Elon Musk smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> But look, either way, I think this was a great thing to do. Yes. Uh, it's super fun. And I think we both, all of us, kind of get got some interesting uh, thing out of it. Or at least had some fun, right? Oh, yeah. It was great. I really loved it. Me too. Um, yeah. yeah I, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do regularly. And I also think that, like, once we... I think... Like, honestly, just as a review of the conversation, I agree mm -hmm. with Marvin. I don't think anybody will watch this for like two hours and a half. That's, that's just crazy. Sure. But I do think that like these calls have a potential of like people watching because I think like if we do a couple more of these, mm -hmm. we'll get better at it and like we'll cut short certain topics. Yeah. Uh, because I feel we went a little bit deep on certain things. Although I was interested in everything. Mm -hmm. um, but like to to make it more formatable for uh, for viewers. Yes, and uh, that's the thing that comes through doing and exactly like you said, Philip, uh, doing a couple more calls like this and to know because exactly probably there were a couple of things that could have been cut more shorter to make it more dynamic. But either that's way, that's your it, job now. Yeah, like you need to edit out all the crap. <laughs> so this this whole conversation instead of like three hours is just gonna be like ten minutes now. But you know what I think? Oh <laughs> yeah. I I actually think that you should post like pieces of this on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's actually a, a a thing that I'm also with my other podcasts doing or going to do now. Actually, subtract. Uh, subtracting pieces like Joe Rogan does with his yes. uh, podcast because it's super smart, okay. and um, and exactly with this, it could there are definitely pieces in this that are very that could definitely be interesting to people. So that's something I would do. Yeah. Great. By the way, if you cut me out too much, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. It's like every time the camera is like pointing to me, it's like blip. Okay, <laughs> next. It's gonna it's, be. It's going to be Philip saying, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I love with Joe Rogan, like uh, when there's like clips that some other people made of him having a conversation with himself or like just what you can do with editing. It's hilarious. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Joe Rogan talking, talking to himself is like, have you ever tried DMT? <laughs> Really? I've never seen this, guys. Yes. Yes. Look it up. Uh, check it. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, yeah, it's been great. Uh, yeah. Gonna go off here. All right. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right, go. guys. Awesome conversation. Speak to you great. soon. Marvin, uh, let's meet up soon, man. Like, yeah. uh, come to Belgium or we come to Dusseldorf. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm keen. Or we go somewhere completely else. Well, let's start with the easy steps first. Right. Yeah. No, but uh, let, let's keep on talking, guys, and uh, have a wonderful night. Yeah. Let's enjoy your food. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed soon. <laughs> well, yeah. all right. Ciao, Good night, guys. guys. Ciao. Bye. Thank you for listening, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.